Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Paid for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music. Or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group. West Virginia proud. Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Paid for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Small Wood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddy Law Firm. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team, so let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. Good morning and welcome to Monty Cater Field at Rams Stadium as Shepard 
plays its senior day against Mercyhurst. The Rams also happy Veterans Day to you as it's Military Appreciation Day at Ram Stadium today as well. But the Rams trying to win and get into the postseason. A win puts them in. We, we don't know where exactly they'll end up due to kind of a three team mix of Kutztown, Shepard, and Cal who all have beaten each other and have all had a loss to one of each other as well. So um, it's kind of a complicated situation right now, but Travis, the Rams trying to win today, secure a spot in the Super Region 1 tournament, and then if you're in the dance, you can have a chance. Absolutely, and that's all this team really wanted to do coming into this season. Uh, Apparently, I mean, of of course you had to adjust your expectations because you lost so much firepower from the year before, but yet the standard remains the standard. This is a traditionally a winning program here at Shepard, so that's something that they've always had their eye on, although it's been a a rougher road than years past to get to this point. They're still in a position to do the things that they want, and that's get a postseason berth, and they have a matchup today versus Mercyhurst, and it's shaping up very much like the Bloomsburg game when you think about it like possibly a trap game maybe they could be looking ahead to the playoffs and and not taking this team serious and then that Bloomsburg game proved to everybody is that if you don't take each and every one of your opponents seriously you run the risk of being upset so maybe Shepard has learned their lesson from that Bloomsburg game and comes in today with a mindset of having to take care of business you want to take care one game at a time and this week it's going to be the Mercyhurst Lakers coming in and they've, they've had a tough season so far but nothing will make their season any better than to have a big win versus Shepard and play spoiler for the Rams playoff hopes. I think there are a few things today that are different from that Bloomsburg game to today's game. One, Shepard at home. Two, this Mercyhurst team has struggled significantly. Bloomsburg was losing games that they were competitive. Mercyhurst really hasn't been too competitive against some of the top teams in the PSAC when you look at it overall, Travis. So feels like a game that Shepard should win, but again, it's college football. You never know what's going to happen here, especially in the PSAC. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from the head coach of the Shepard University Rams, Ernie McCook. This is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Hi, Cresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. Have you heard the news? Bechtel Jewelers is going out of business. Hi, I'm Lori, and I want to thank our cherished customers for years of friendship. We are liquidating our entire inventory with savings up to 70%. Come visit us in Inwood, now during our diamond stud blowout, where for a limited time, our diamond studs are up to 50% off. Don't miss your chance to get the diamonds of your dreams. We welcome you back on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. We'll now get into our coach's interview brought to you by Parsons Ford. They're located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. We're now joined by the head coach of the Shepherd University Rams, Ernie McCook. Coach, a good win for your team over East Strasburg. What would you take away from the game? Yeah, I thought we played well in all three phases. I think our defense was swarming, created a lot of turnovers, uh, really answered the bell that we needed needed them to do. 
uh, like they've been playing all year. I thought our offense, we were able to have great balance, make plays in passing game, running game, and I thought our special teams was pretty awesome. You mentioned the defense stepping up for you, and one of the key moments in the game, you're up 24-14, you turn the ball over, and uh, East Strasburg throws that pick six. Um, big play there to kind of flip some momentum back on your side. Uh, just talk about, I guess, Naeem Alexander coming up with that play. Yeah. And Naeem, what a great play it was and the way he finished and the way they did everything the way you were supposed to after you make an interception. Down the near sideline, he had a convoy of blockers with him, and he finished the play. It was, it was a huge play for a football team in a big game. Offensively, uh, you mentioned it got that balance going, but also you get a tight end in the end zone for the first time in a while. Uh, Brian Jester scores a touchdown for you. Just you know, talk about, I guess, those guys' progression throughout the season. Obviously not catching as many passes as you've had from that position in the past, but still uh, producing from a blocking standpoint. Sure. Brian, Brian has really developed into a really solid tight end for us. Uh, he wasn't the primary target on that play. And Seth did a nice job finding him, giving him a ball that was a big body throw. Uh, but I'm real pleased with the tight end position and what they've been able to do. Moving forward this week, taking on Mercyhurst, a team that's struggled this year, but what have you seen from them so far? You know, they, they can have a fast start on offense. They have a quarterback that can make some plays, make some throws, extend plays. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a challenge for our defense with them because they can also have balance and have a solid running game. Defensively, they're going to be multiple. They're going to give us looks that we're not used to. We have to be able to have a game plan in place that will handle those looks. And then we have to be solid in special teams. This game this week, essentially, you win, you're probably going to be in the playoffs. If you lose, you're most likely out. Uh, just any thoughts, I guess, where your team's at at this point in the season? You know, I think it's really important that we look at it. We're a bubble team and that we have to win to be able to be in consideration to be in. Uh, I think our goal is to win the game uh, on Saturday, and then when we're sitting in the parking lot, we'll look at other scores and see where we end up. <laughs> That's fair. And uh, heading into this week, too, it, it's been kind of a – Interesting way the rankings are playing out right now. You know, you guys beat Cal, Cal beat Kutztown. It's a new three are kind of all in that same spot right now. Uh, just looking at that, I guess, any thoughts on the PSAC conference in terms of how competitive it's been this year and just throughout your time in the PSAC? Yeah, the PSAC is a great conference. I mean, it's got a lot of uh, balance in it. Uh, there's a lot of great coaches that build really strong programs. It is a challenge week in and week out. So we'll have to, uh, you know, when you – you know, kind of when you look at what Cal, Kutztown, East Stroudsburg are all like, um, they're all teams that play great on defense and are able to run the football and throw the football. So, I mean, it's all teams with balance and have great leadership at the head coaching position. It's senior day for you guys this week. It's a small senior class. What have these three seniors meant to your program? Uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, you know, you, you always the, the, you know you talk about uh, Zach Fry, a long snapper, very key. Com a key member for us. Uh, it's nice when you don't even think about the long snapper. You mean he's doing his job. Uh, let's see, Nazir Russell. Um, it looks like Nas is going to have another year back. We just learned that. Uh, so that's that's a good deal. And uh, I think it's Ofori and uh, Dwayne Grandfather. Yeah, Cedric Ofori, you know, been a great guy in our program since coming here out of high school. And then Dwayne coming home from Lackawanna, and Dwayne's a great spark plug for us. And then uh, also Military Appreciation Week, always a big week for you guys uh, to honor the, the military and have those flyovers as well. Uh, just what does that mean to you? I, I think this is one of the greatest things that we do here at Shepherd University during football season. When we can have a Military Appreciation Day, uh, the way our administration one has the value for the people who serve our country, not only just in the military but in first responders, um, I, I have a great appreciation for that. I want every veteran and every current military member that does attend our football game to feel special and understand the thanks that we have for them and what they do to give us the ability to do what we do. Uh, we, we can't live the lives we have without the military that, that supports us and keeps us free. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck this week. Thank you. That concludes our coach interview brought to you by Parsons Ford, located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road in Martinsburg or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first Parsons. This is Shepherd Rams Football on TV 10. The challenges of tomorrow need a leader of character, a West Point graduate.
a retired active duty army veteran with 27 years of uniformed service, a battle-tested leader who knows what it means to serve. We need conservative Mac Warner. As a veteran, family man, and lifelong servant leader, Mac has the values and experience to fight for our children, our families, and our future. Mac Warner is ready to serve. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back to Ram Stadium. Senior Day festivities taking place on the field. The three seniors for Shepard this season, Dwayne Grantham, linebacker from Martinsburg High School, safety Cedric Orfori, and lawn snapper Zach Fry. Interesting thing about this group, only two of them or, or two of them came in as transfers to Shepard last season. Ofori, the only four year Ram. Uh, but, of course, Grantham has had a great impact. Before, he's played a lot of different roles on special teams and, and safety. And Coach McCook, as we just heard from him talking about Zach Fry, he doesn't have to ever worry about the snap as a long snapper, so that means he's doing a pretty good job. So a guy you don't talk about a whole lot means that he's doing good. Right yeah, absolutely. If you're, if you're a long snapper and the coach can breathe the sigh of relief when you step out on the field, that means you're pretty good at your job. That is a true skill and you know, you're lucky when you have somebody that you can rely on like that. So hats off to that young man, and hopefully he can go on and, and teach his art to some other young up-and-coming football players. Long snappers are always in demand. Our pregame show is brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing customer integration services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931. Or visit whmsystems.com. Let's talk a little bit more about these two teams here, Travis. We'll take a look at both teams and, and what their strengths are. What do you think has been the strength of this Mercyhurst team, if you had to point something out? Obviously, it's been an up-and-down year for them. Not a whole lot of success at 2-8, and eight, but quarterback Adam Urena gets the ball out pretty quick. Is a pretty athletic guy, and they uh, – have a lot of different wide receivers that they like to get involved. And you, you kind of lead me to my first point, Adam Harina coming over. He's a junior college transfer, started out at Citrus Community College in Glendora, California. And if that sounds familiar, that's because they have a famous alumni, Billy Kilmer. So all you old school Redskin fans out there, if you want to know where he got his start before he started his career at UCLA, that's where Billy Kilmer also went to community college. So there you go, a little tidbit for you. But you talked about it. Adam Harina has done a very good job this year of spreading the football out to a lot of his teammates. He has completed touchdown passes to 10 different players. So he's having a pretty good year so far despite being sacked quite a bit. Completing 59.5% of his passes, 2,361 yards, has 21 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, and he's been sacked a lot this year so far that Mercyhurst team has given up 48 sacks so despite him being under constant duress has managed to put together quite a good season and one of the few bright spots for this Lakers ball club and Travis on the Shepherd side of things the offense has pretty much been consistently good the only issue has been the turnovers and, and that seems to be the the one thing that may be holding them back a little bit at times yeah and and, and they seem to, to come in spurts for the Rams, particularly in the passing game, I mean, Seth Morgan has stepped in and done an excellent job. You look at 
throughout the PSAC, and we noticed it throughout the course of the year, is that a lot of teams have had to use multiple quarterbacks. And Shepard has been one of the few teams that have been able to maintain that stability at the quarterback position. Also, uh, funny enough, Mercyhurst, they've only had one primary start all this year. But you're looking at Seth Morgan, only nine interceptions so far this season, but they, excuse me, eight interceptions, but they seem to have come in bunches. When he's thrown one, he usually throws a couple during the game, and we've talked about just the constant worry of fumbling in the running game. And so far, Shepard has been able to not take the loss too many times this year because of those turnovers, but just because they have so much firepower and so much talent. But as you're gearing up, getting ready to go into the postseason, you know that you're not going to be able to go out there and make those kind of mistakes and be able to escape unscathed. So that's something that Shepard, and that's going to be a key for them today, is that they're going to have to play a clean game because that's really the only shot that Mercyhurst has a chance to pull the upset today is that they're able to force a couple of turnovers, get some extra possessions, and keep that momentum on their sidelines throughout today's contest. All right, let's take another two-minute break on the other side of that break. We will hear, or we will go in the huddle with two Shepherd Ranch football players. This is Shepherd Ranch football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa Treasurer. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. There's nothing quite like the Honda Accord Hybrid and the CRV Hybrid when it comes to exhilarating efficiency. With hybrid technology and thrilling capability, these vehicles deliver an electrifying performance on every drive. But what truly makes these hybrids special is the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. Redefine your driving experience with Honda, KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA's moving lives forward. Based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. We now go in the huddle, brought to you by the Myriad Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue or give them a call at 304-263-4343. We now go in the huddle with Shepard Rams tight end, Brian Jester. Brian, you got into the end zone last week in the win against uh, East Strasburg. What did you kind of see on that play? And just how do you feel like you've progressed throughout the season at tight end? Yeah, I feel like at tight end every game I've gotten a little bit better, uh, learning you know, watching film with the coaches, taking their advice, learning uh, from the older guys in the room, Tank and um, Jack, who's been hurt most of the year. Hopefully he'll come back soon. But just learning everything I can from those guys. And then uh, on the touchdown bl- play at an in-breaking route, I uh, found a gap in the defense and sat down in it. And uh, Seth was able to deliver me a good ball. So, yeah, it's a good play. Tight end's always been a big part of this offense. This season, you guys haven't been as involved in the passing game, but both you and Fisher, for the most part, have been in there you know, blocking quite a bit. Uh, how important is it for you to be just as good as a blocker as you, as, as you are as a receiver? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Coach McCook always tells us, if you can't block, you can't play at tight end. So it's a thing we take pride in. We consider ourselves outside tackles, you know, part of the offensive line. Um, in the past game, you know, if, it's, if we have the opportunity to make a play, we're going to do our best to make it. Uh, we're really just trying to do everything we can to help the team win. What did you kind of learn from the previous guys that were here at tight end, like Brian Walker and Alex Wetzel? Yeah, Brian was obviously an elite tight end and All-American. I learned a lot from him. Uh, I, was, I was able to watch him for one year and being able to co- learn a lot from Coach Mike McCook, who's now here coaching us up, and obviously having the, the senior guys like Tank and guys like that to help me. 
in terms of the offense, how do you feel like the offense has progressed just overall since week one to now? Mm -hmm. I think our, I think we've understood a lot about who we are and what we are. Um, the play calling, we've meshed that well with the talent that we have. Um, we obviously have a lot of athletes at, outside of wide receiver and in the backfield, um, just trying to get everybody the ball. And the run game's gotten better every week, I feel like, so that's been something we've been able to rely on. Mercyhurst this week, what have you seen from their defense so far? Uh, they're a good defense. They're a senior-led defense. Uh, almost their entire starting defense is seniors, so you know this is probably going to be their last game, so they're going to be coming with everything they got, so we've got to be prepared for them. Senior day and military appreciation day for you guys as well. Does that mean anything to you? Uh, military appreciation is obviously a big day, you know, understanding the freedoms that we have and things like that, and then representing the seniors that are going to be leaving us. The senior leadership that they have as a part of this team is definitely special. All right, Brian, thank you. Good luck this week. Sir. We now go in the huddle with Shepard Rams corner, Naeem Alexander. Naeem, a good game for you guys as you were able to beat East Strasburg last week. What did you take away from the game? Um, defense wins football games, you know. We had to hold mindset all game. Special teams, we can't worry about that, can't worry about what offense is going to do. We only have to depend on us, and that's what we did all game. You had that pick six uh, to kind of turn the tide of the game when it looked like East Strasburg might be able to make a comeback there. Uh, what would you see on that play, and um, I guess just how do you think it, it changed the game? Um, well, first off, I knew um, he was about to run a slant. They kind of, uh, you know, they just got the pick for themselves, so they tried to line up quick. He ran a slant, but Narcy came in. He uh, got in the way of the quarterback's vision a little bit, um, made the quarterback throw behind the receiver. I seen it in the air, caught it, and then him and uh, Bats were down there to help me lead into the end zone. You started off as a guy that really made a name for himself on special teams, and, and now this year you've made a name for yourself on defense. How do you think, I guess, your ability to play on special teams helped you earn a role on the defense this year? Um, it definitely helped out a lot. I mean, these coaches, they emphasize special teams. You know, they see you working in practice. They see you working on special teams. That's going to earn your way to get more playing time on Saturdays on defense. So that's, that's just been my goal since I've been here. Just work hard every chance I get on every opportunity, whether it be special teams or defense. Just go out there and work. And you guys had a lot of injuries this year in the secondary. Uh, how do you think you've grown as a player this season? Um, definitely came a long way from beginning of the season, you know, had a couple hiccups, but got into the, you know, midst of things, probably about halfway point. And ever since then, been in my stride and haven't looked back. This week, Mercyhurst, uh, what have you seen from them on film and what would be some keys for you guys to get the win? Um, honestly, it's pretty much the same as every other week, you know, have to treat each week as... You know, you're playing undefeated team, number one team in the nation. They have great guys all across the board, and we just have to be ready to step up and play. Includes our player interviews portion of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. When we return, we will have more. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. 
Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. The challenges of tomorrow need a leader of character. A West Point graduate, a retired active duty Army veteran with 27 years of uniformed service, a battle-tested leader who knows what it means to serve. We need conservative Mac Warner. As a veteran, family man, and lifelong servant leader, Mac has the values and experience to fight for our children, our families, and our future. Mac Warner is ready to serve. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our on-site producer, and Matt and Daryl Miller, our cameramen. Kyle McLaughlin back in the studio. Travis, so we got a few minutes here before kickoff. Let's get into your keys to the game. Brought to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. Start with the visitors, Mercyhurst, and then we'll jump over to Shepard. All right, well, for Mercyhurst, it's going to fall on their defense. Their defense is really going to have to step up today. In particular, they're going to have to limit run after catch. We saw last week Shepard really imposed their larger wide receivers on East Stroudsburg and really relied on getting that run after catch. So that means Mercyhurst, they're going to have to tackle well in space. Also on defense for Mercyhurst, they're going to have to attack the ball on defense. They're going to need some turnovers if they expect to be in this game. And another thing they're going to have to do, they're going to have to do better on third downs. So far this year, they've let their opponents convert on 51 percent of their third downs and that's just keeping that offense on the field the defense has to get off the field you don't want them wearing down down the stretch also on offense Mercyhurst they're going to have to do a good job of not getting silly penalties you look back to last week they had nine penalties for 84 yards so that's certainly something that they can't afford to do today and one more thing they're going to need to create some big plays on special teams like we mentioned with the turnovers they're going to have to do some things to create some extra possessions and for special teams they're going to have to do some things that was going to create some momentum and get those fans that made that long trip down for Mercyhurst PA you're going to give them something to cheer about. They want to try to keep the momentum on their sides and possibly keep that Shepherd Rams ball club on their heels. Looking over at Shepard, some of their keys for today's game, just play a clean game. Don't give a lot of turnovers. That was something that they kind of bogged them down when they went against Bloomsburg. It was that they went out and they had opportunities to take the lead. They just didn't do what they needed to do to get that win, and turnovers were one of the reasons why they weren't able to come away with a win in that ball game. Also for Shepard, they're going to have to harass the quarterback. Mercyhurst gave up four sacks last week versus Seton Hill. On, on the season, they've given up 48 sacks. So that's something that... Shepard is really going to have to get after, and that's something that the Rams have done very well down the stretch is being able to manufacture pressure with not necessarily having to blitz. They've been able to work different combinations on that defensive front to get pressure on the quarterback, and that's something that they're going to have to do well today. Also, on offense for Shepard, move the pocket a little bit. Seth Morgan has shown this year that he's very good outside the pocket. He's a mobile threat, but not in the form of him pulling the ball down and running it and getting yards with his legs. It's more of him extending plays, taking those check down passes, and that's something that he's excelled at throughout this season. And also, we talked about special teams for Mercyhurst. You can also look over their Shepard sidelines. They're going to need some big plays out of their special teams. That has been a consistent bright spot for the Shepard Rams regular season. It's been the quality play of special teams. Last week, they had a couple of hiccups that was a bit unusual for that special teams unit, but if they're looking to get back on track today, the special teams unit can certainly be the group of guys that can go out there and get it done for the Rams today and help them get this win and propel them into the postseason. Got about a minute until the opening kickoff. Our opening kickoff is brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester, located at 3985 Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. Again, happy Veterans Day to those of you that have served our country or are currently serving our country, protecting us and our freedoms. And Military Appreciation Day here as well at Ram Stadium. We had the flyover a few moments ago. Colin may have replayed that for you. As, uh, unfortunately, just a little bit of a miscommunication. It seemed like we thought it was at 11.59, and I guess it was at 11.55. So that's why we didn't have it live. But good crowd on hand here, Travis, and uh, a great ceremony before the game as well for the veterans. And that's always nice when you see, I believe that was a C-130, the uh, fly out of Martinsburg. So it's always nice, and you just – to hear just the awesome power as they fly overhead and again it's a great day for football and that just adds to the atmosphere and always a 
great opportunity to honor those that have served. Yep, Shepard versus Mercyhurst. Again, a Ram win, and they are in the postseason now in terms of where they will play or what seed they will receive. That's still up in the air, but a win you're most likely in at this point. As Shepard currently ranked sixth, uh, which would mean they would have to go on the road, but the team ahead of them right now, number five, Kutztown. They are playing in the PSAC Championship today against a tough Slippery Rock team, so it's possible that they could fall to three losses, and maybe Shepard gets in ahead of them or gets a higher seed, I guess, uh, ahead of them. And, of course, the four seed is Cal currently, and Shepard beat Cal head-to-head, but Cal doesn't have a bad loss. Shepard has a bad loss to Bloomsburg, so that's kind of how things are being evaluated right now we do believe so maybe again if it's more so shepherd versus cal the head-to-head might help them but hey at the end of the day shepherd just got to take care of business <laughs> on the field and they'll go play whoever wherever and i think that's probably this team's mentality at this point I'm they're back-to-back back regional well, champions we're journalism majors we're not built to try to figure out this type of mathematical <laughs> equations there's all this alchemy to figure out who's going to be playing where it's more so just <laughs> your opinion versus another guy's opinion right i mean it's all based on committee so shepherd will kick it deep to Mercyhurst, meaning the rams will get the ball to start the second half james bozick to kick off for shepherd and we are Underway on this Veterans Day, Saturday in Shepherdstown. Bozik's kick is booted to about the one-yard line. And Mercyhurst had a little bit of a lane, but gets it only out to about the 24-23 yard line, and that's where the Lakers will take over. As that was Kerbacker on the return there for Mercyhurst. We're going to take a look at this Urena offense. Adam Urena, the quarterback, and you mentioned his college experience in a famous alumni. He's got three famous alumni from his high school experience at Chino Hills High School, which is the high school of Lonzo, Lamelo, and Leangelo Ball. I think actually the, the younger Ball brothers might have transferred at some point, but they did, of course, uh, attend Chino Hills for a little bit and were known for Putting up like 160 points a game in their <laughs> high school games. But Reyna will hand it off here on first and 10, and Coma Yao there right away to make the tackle. And on that carry for Mercyhurst was Schof, Dustin Schof, the grad student. Some big backs in this Mercyhurst backfield. Terra standing at six foot two, Schof at six foot. And then you have Aaron Rodriguez, who's the undersized 5'10", kind of receiving back that they'll mix in. But it looks like Schof is again the back here on second down and about eight. And Urena looks to throw, throws it complete out of the backfield to Schof. He sheds off. Christian McDowell is still going. The big back up to about the 40-yard line before he's brought down on the play. It's a first down for Mercyhurst. And Schoff coming off of a big game last week versus Seton Hill. He had 13 carries for 74 yards. And, again, he's shown that he's got good hands coming out of the backfield. Not many catches, but he does have a touchdown on the year with five catches, 86 yards coming into today's game. Right on the shotgun, Schoff remaining the back to his left here on first and ten. And they'll run Schoff, and he's brought down on the play. Harold O'Neill coming up to make the tackle. And you can see the approach that Mercyhurst is looking to take. They want to have a ball control style, want to eat up the clock, limit the amount of possessions that that Rams offense is going to be able to go out there on the field. And, again, a smart play by Mercyhurst just to try to keep the game close, and you never know what can happen late in the game. A funny bounce of the ball, and you could be in business. Yeah, I think it's a smart way to play it. Urena looking to throw. Completes the near side, hauled in on the play by Braden Black, and a flag comes flying in, so this will tack onto it. Omari Terry frustrated with the call. And Terry, one of the fire, fire, fiery competitors on that Rams defensive unit, and sometimes that boils over, but those are the type of plays that you see Mercyhurst, they went with a maximum protection look. They realize that they've had trouble protecting the quarterback, so how do they counter that? One, they keep in extra protection to block for the quarterback, then they also move the quarterback and get Urena out on the edge and give him some clean, easy reads so he can get the ball out of his hands quickly. So I'll move the ball down to the 37-yard line for Mercyhurst on this opening drive of a good opportunity to get on the board here first. 
Now, they haven't really had a strength in the kicking game, so it's kind of touchdown or bust for this team, at least from long-range field goals. Here's a pass underneath complete, short of the sticks. That is black once again, tackled at about the 32-yard line. And that will bring up second down for Mercyhurst. Black coming into today's game, racking up 17 catches for 202 yards and two touchdowns on the year. Again, Urena doing a good job of just spreading the ball out, making quick decisions, getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Second down and five for Urena in the offense. Here's another run on the ground, taking it inside the 30-yard line on the carry that time. Appeared to be... Pappas, I believe. Yep, number 15, Mike Pappas, the senior running back from Parma Heights, Ohio. So Pappas remains the back here on a third down and one after the four-yard carry. Arena sends Black in motion, takes the snap, will give it to Pappas, who gets a good block from his quarterback, <laughs> and he's going to take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Mercyhurst. Hats off to the QB. He had a good block on the backside, scooped that backside defender, and that was just enough for his running back to get to the edge, and you couldn't have scripted better opening drive for this Mercyhurst team. Just ball control, ground and pound, using play action pass, and then able to make the most of that opportunity to get that first touchdown of the game. So Mercyhurst coming out swinging. At this point, they're playing with house money. All they can really do is just embrace that spoiler role and just come out and swing for the fences. Mike Pappas, a 27-yard touchdown run to get Mercyhurst on the board. The extra point coming here from Nathan Naguki. The junior kicker in Naguki's kick is up and good. So Mercyhurst, seven. Shepard, nothing. All that talk about playoffs. <laughs> Not so fast. Not so fast. We'll take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, private wealth advisor with the Marius Group a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. So Mercyhurst is on the board with the 27-yard Pappas touchdown run. And it is Lakers 7, Shepard nothing here for 11.36 to go in this opening quarter. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Mercer, Mercyhurst will kick it away here, Travis, and they have the early 7 nothing lead. Pressure on for Shepard, McDowell, and Malachi Brown back deep even though it is early, but still, I mean, good at first drive. Urena made a lot of smart throws. And, and McDowell will take it from about a yard deep. McDowell gets out to about the 20-yard line. And this Lakers crowd is traveling. It's yeah. a long trip, but they are here and are pretty loud on this near sideline. Griffin Beatty coming up to make that tackle on special teams, and Shepard has it at its own 20-yard line. And that's something, I mean, Mercyhurst has had a tough season that we've talked about. 2-0, and 2-8 and eight overall, 1-6 and six in the conference, and on a three-game losing streak, but you certainly wouldn't tell, take that from the crowd that has made that trip. You do tell. If they've made that trip, they're determined. <laughs> and that's something that you always have to worry about. If you have a determined opponent, that's something that you can certainly never take lightly. Especially for a noon kickoff. So, good to see, though. Good crowd on hand here. And Shepard is here goes Barry Hill down the far sideline, and Barry Hill is finally driven out of bounds into Mercyhurst territory. So the quick pass out to the far side works well for the Rams, and Shepard moves the chains on the first play from scrimmage for Shepard. Dylan Ferretti was the linebacker that was able to get a paw on Hill to push him out of bounds, but actually going to be short of midfield, so out to the 47 as he kept running once he got out of bounds on that far side, but first and 10 for Shepard 
If under 11 minutes to go in this opening quarter, here's a play action pass, and Morgan's looking deep down the middle of the field and caught inside the five-yard line and into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. It's Jeremiah Taylor on that deadly post route, and the Rams are right back in it now at 7-6 with 10.46 to go in this opening quarter. And again, running that post over the middle, and the thing that was able to open it up was Brian Jester running a shallow drag underneath. That was something that just caught that safety's eye, and as he stepped down to take that tight end, that made an easy read for Seth Morgan. Like we've talked about all year long, very comfortable when you're able to work inside the hash marks, and that time just able to deliver a strike right over the middle to Taylor. Bozick missed his last two PATs last week, but he nails that one. It's 7-7 here with 10.46 to go in this opening quarter. We'll take another 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. 7-7 our score, 10-46 to go in this opening quarter. And Shepard will kick it away with Bozick. Good start to this ball game. I mean, that might be the thing that holds Mercyhurst back, even if they're able to move the ball offensively. I don't know if they're going to have the guys to keep up with the Shepard offenses. That one is muffed inside the five-yard line, but picking it up and getting it out to actually going to be inside the 15-yard line. Great job by that Shepard special teams unit to fly to the football, and it will be first down and 10 here for uh, Mercier, who had that good drive after Shepard gets into the end zone with the Jeremiah Taylor touchdown, just a two-play drive resulting 80 yards and the long touchdown pass. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. So first down here for East Strasburg from their own 15, or for Mercyhurst from their own 15-yard line. And this Mercyhurst defense, they have had their struggles all season long, giving up an average of over 40 points per game. Irena takes the high snap, looks to throw complete again. There's Black, and Black Gets it across the 25-yard line. So that connection looks strong here early, Travis. And again, Urena just getting the ball quickly, making good decisions. They're not trying to take deep routes. And that's something that you want to do if you're giving up a lot of sacks. What you can't have is your quarterback standing back there in the pocket being a stationary target, waiting for those deep routes to develop. So what you do, you want to give him some short stuff underneath, give him some hitches, give him some snags, and that's going to set up those deep shots later on. But if the defense keeps giving you those things underneath, keep taking them. Arena goes play action, rolls to the near side, complete underneath. And getting out to about the 30-yard line before Kevin Kowser makes the tackle. There's Pappas in on the reception. So kind of an interesting formation there. Mercyhurst going with two running backs in the ball game. Omari Terry a little slow to get up, and they will take a injury timeout here to get him off the field. Even looks like Pappas was shaken up a bit on that play. May have fallen on the football. He was tapping his helmet looking for a little bit of relief himself. 9.47 to go in this opening quarter. We're tying at 7 after the Pappas touchdown run and the Taylor touchdown reception. A lot of action here early on at Ram Stadium. Monty Cater Field. There's Arena and the offense back on the field for the Lakers with 9.30 to go in this opening quarter. Arena looks to throw. Throws to the near sideline. Another good ball and another that completion. That was good ball. Good anticipation. The wide receiver hadn't even made the break yet, and Arena had put the ball in the right spot for his teammate to come down with it. Good and job Schoff that time. again on, on that reception there, the running back out of the backfield, making a good catch there on this near side. So Mercyhurst gets another first down, first down and 10 for the Lakers. 
But those bigger backs, they give you some versatility because you can easily plug them in at the tight end position, and, and it's hard to notice. Up to the 44-yard line there, show of a good hold, a hurdle! Gets across midfield, has the first down, and Goodness running a man gracious. out of bounds. Goes show. Singleton takes the contact to bring him out of bounds, but... <laughs> Singleton is a little bit too light to come up and handle Schof like that. Schof right now putting on his own showcase, catching the ball out of the backfield, hurtling defenders, stiff-arming people. He's a physical running back. Fun to watch here early on is the Mercyhurst team as they're moving the ball pretty well. Here's a pass complete to Black. He takes it inside down to the 25-yard line. So, again, the Lakers are moving the football. They're going quick on the ball. Shepard having to run substitutions on to try to keep up. I, I think it's a good approach here from the Lakers. And we talked about the injuries that are beginning to mount for the Shepherd Rams. So not only are you having to shuffle in people in and out of the game, then they're going to have to communicate quickly once they get out there on the field. So right now Mercyhurst just applying the right amount of pressure to keep them on their heels. Four-yard gain on first down here on second and six. A run there for Pappas. Well, the home fans they get a third down. Home fans are looking for a, excuse me, the uh, Laker fans are looking for a horse collar tackle on that one as the defender went up high around Pappas's neck, but picked up a couple yards on that play. But right now, just Mercy, yeah, Mercyhurst is doing a good job of just mixing it up, running the ball, using play action pass, getting their young quarterback out of the pocket on the move, giving him some quick reads, and he, he's doing a great job right now, just making quick decisions and delivering accurate passes. Black goes in motion, and Shove had a big hole, but a flag comes flying in. I'm going to say false start. Of false the start against the Lakers, so that's a pretty big penalty. Uh, you'll still have a third and manageable at third and eight, but third and three, you felt pretty good about it. Two yard, or two plays probably to get those three yards, too, if you, if you wanted to run another one. Yeah, because at, at third and three, your whole playbook is open. You can either run the ball, you've been running the ball successfully, or you can go for a high percentage pass underneath. But now backing it up to third and eight really kind of limits your options and it gives a little bit more of an advantage to the defense because now they kind of know how you have to attack them. Yeah, no one in the backfield here on third down and eight with 6.55 to go in the opening quarter. We're tied at seven between Mercy Harris and Shepard. High snap, but Urena handles it. It's tipped up in the line, and luckily – for Mercyhurst, it falls incomplete. So I'll bring up fourth down. We'll see if they go for it. Like I said, not a kicking unit that has attempted a whole lot of long field goals this season. So you would presume here on fourth and eight from the 27, they will probably go for it. It would be a 44-yard field goal from here. So and We talked about the size of the quarterback for Mercyhurst, listed at only 5'9". So if you know the ball has to come out quickly, that's something that you should tell your defense coming into that day, coming into that game is that you want to get your hands up. You know that those balls are going to be coming out quick, so it's probably going to be something underneath. If you can get your hands up, chances are high that you can get a batted pass. Here's a pass over the middle and incomplete. Looked like it was intended for Austin Urena. Looked like there may have been a miscommunication because there was a couple of receivers in the area. You had Urena, the wide receiver. You also had the big tight end, Ms. Gorski, was also there in that area. So it looked like Ms. Gorski was the one that broke free. Yeah, he was more open. But. Yeah, and but the pass was kind of kind of split the difference between the two. Yep. But you see, like, Mercyhurst almost has to play with a desperation on the offensive side of the ball because your, their defense has had so many struggles throughout the season. So it's it's pretty much an all-or-nothing approach for that Lakers offense. And Shepard made it look pretty easy on that first drive. Just yeah. two plays to go 80 yards. And here they're taking over again. They're going to run the football with Malachi Brown. And Brown gets positive yardage out to about the 33-yard line. is where they'll spot them. And that, and that could kind of get you into, into a dangerous situation because Mercyhurst had that nice, long, sustained drive, and then Shepard comes right back out. Boom, boom, couple plays. They get down the field, score a touchdown. Then you put your defense right back out there, and that's a long stretch for them to be out there. And, again, Mercyhurst had a nice little drive there until they stalled out there at the end. So a nice long drive would, would be much appreciated by that Rams defense. Seven-yard gain on first down. Here's a pass complete to Batten. 
on kind of an awkward looking throw from Morgan and Batten goes up and hauls it in, has the first down, takes the ball into Mercyhurst territory down to about the 35 yard line. So from the 34 to the 35 goes Shepard. 5.45 to go in this opening quarter. We're tied at seven. And with the injuries at the wide receiver position, Cordell Batten has been included more into the offense. And then you get Morgan outside the pocket. Does a good job of extending plays with his mobility and doing a good job of taking check downs. A very accurate passer, especially when he's rolling out to his right. Brown is the back here on first and ten. And Malachi gets a good carry there up the middle. The dives forward. Down to about the 30, about a five-yard pickup. Bring up second and five. And Brown, no doubting his explosive playmaking ability, good running the ball, also very good catching out of the backfield, but his major problem this year has been putting the ball on the turf. He has a tendency to let that ball get away from his body, and that turns into bad plays. Morgan, good pass out there, complete to Jeremiah Taylor inside the 20-yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Jerome Mullins. We'll bring up another first down for Shepard as they move the chains. Taylor and Batten go to the wide side. Brown is the back. Hill and Brian Chester split out wide here to this near side. First down and 10 from the 20. Shepard in the red zone for the first down today. Here's a pass flipped out to Batten and Batten takes it for about six yards before he's brought down on the play coming up and making the tackle was Sam Butcher that was a good block that time by Fisher out in space not a easy assignment when you're out there blocking on the edge that's where you see a lot of your holding penalties will come because those guys are out there and they're right in front of the referee so it's hard for them to get into good position to maintain it for that jet sweep to get around them but Jester did a good job on that last play Second and five for Shepard. 3.48 to go in this first quarter. Here's Malachi Brown, a stutter step in the hole and doesn't find much room after that. And again, you want to see that more and more of those type of plays for Malachi Brown. We know that he has the athleticism to break the big, long runs. But what you really want to see out of your running back as he continues to develop and gets more and more comfortable with that position is what is he going to be able to do when the defense has him bottled up and your only option is to grind out that two- and three-yard run? Will he be able to consistently hit those type of runs that's going to set up those big plays? And you've seen that over the course of the season that he does have that type of toughness to run in between the tackles and get those hard yards. So third down and three from the 13. Play action pass complete underneath to Barry Hill. Hill takes it inside the 10. Going to be close to moving the chains here. And he will get the first down. So now first down and goal for the Rams from the six-yard line. I think early on, the, the, the disparity that you're seeing between the Rams' offense and that Lakers' defense is speed. You can see just the speed and athleticism is just so much more in favor of that Rams' offensive unit. Just Mercy Hurst is just struggling to come up with answers, trying to get a foothold here early on in the game. I haven't seen this too often. Both running backs are in the game here, and they'll flip it out to Cam Dorner. Dorner gets a good block from Malachi Brown, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard! To make it 13 to 7 Rams with 2.25 to go in the opening quarter. That's always a good sign when you see players fighting to make a play for their teammate. That's always something. You know you want to make the play. Everybody wants to make the play, but that what separates the good teams from the great teams is are you able to go out there and lay it on the line and make a play for a teammate? Are you going to be the one that's going to set that big block that's going to free up a teammate? And that's really going to help to get the momentum going for this Shepherd Rams football team. Bozix PAT. Is good, and it is Shepard, 14, Mercyhurst, 7. We'll take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. 
paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. Our first quarter is presented to you on TV 10 by the Skinner Law Firm Accident and Injury Lawyers representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com as well as Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg located at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3319. As here on the kickoff return, good return there for Mercyhurst from... Uh, that was Kerbacher. Kerbacher, yeah, that time on the kick return. Kerbacher coming off of a solid performance last week versus Seton Hill. Three catches for 39 yards. Has only had a couple of kick returns coming into today's game, but so far has proven to be up for the challenge. Has had a couple solid returns here early on. Excuse me, that number, 304-263-3361 for Smallwood and Small Insurance, but... Um, our scoring drive is also brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. As Shepard on the board again in this one, 14 to 7. Cam Dorner scores on the touchdown reception, a six-yard touchdown reception. Got a good block from Malachi Brown as well, and now a false start going against Mercyhurst will bang him up here to first and 15 after the good kickoff return, Travis. And you mentioned that touchdown by Dorner. It's almost as if Shepard is just looking to put something on tape as they're going to be trying to set up something going into the postseason, having both of those running backs in the game at the same time. We talked about how Malachi Brown was a converted wide receiver, so, you know, he's going to be natural out there playing in space. Shof, a solid run. Pena comes up and meets him right around the original line of scrimmage. And that was some good blocking up front by Mercyhurst. It was a nice lane there, and Payne did a good job to come up and fill the hole. You're not going to see too many safeties that are eager to come up and tackle a running back the size of Schoff. And You look at it, Dustin Schoff, he's a grad student. So this is his last college game most likely, unless somehow he's got another year of eligibility. You know, eligibility gets a little weird with COVID <laughs> and everything. Now. It gets a little fuzzy sometimes. But you presume this is his last game, and I mean, he's out here running hard this one. Knocked down, or Urena escapes and throws incomplete. There was a flag on the play, so I'm, I'm thinking the referees are probably going to call a, a shot to the head. Yeah, they're going to call a targeting. Oh, wow. Amari Terry gets disqualify for targeting and that's just a tough situation you have a quarterback that's 5'9 and not that Amari Terry is that big of a guy himself he's only 5'8 so he's going in tackling standing up and he just happens to hit the quarterback in the head and for targeting I could see this some type of personal foul but ejecting him from the game on a hit like that I, I think that's that's extreme I understand you want to maintain safety of the game but you have two players out there. One of them's five eight. One of them's five nine. It's only you can only go so low. He came in with good technique. Urena did a good job of keeping his feet and getting outside the pocket. But that's certainly unfortunate that Terry gets ejected from the game on a play like that. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a, a strange situation. You don't see too many targeting calls on a play in the pocket. First of all, uh, typically that's a call kind of reserved for pass plays over the middle is, is when you see it the most. Uh, so a little bit different there, and I think it's probably, like you said, maybe a little bit extreme. But as we said before, you know, you want to protect the players, number one. And number two, I mean, quarterback it gets the benefit yeah. of the doubt a lot more of the time, so yeah, it's tough. But first and ten here for Mercier's is, again, Schaff running the football. Shoff, excuse me, and a good carry there on that run. And Pena comes up and make that tackle. So Shepard has gotten a few guys back on this defense. We mentioned those injuries. Grantham's been back now. Pena's been back. Still awaiting the return of Nathan Muley on the D-line. As it looks like we have another issue with the clock and, and it may be a situation with muley where you have postseason aspirations do you risk him in a game where let's face it you're probably favored to win and uh, you, you, but you know you're certainly going to need 
him in the playoffs. It might be something where he may have been healthy enough to go, where they just wanted to hold him out for another week just to have him 110% ready for the playoff run. It seems like the issue may be, for some reason, the clock says 14 minutes. Or no, it does say 14.1. I just can't see. It says 14.1 <laughs> seconds. But I think there is a clock issue. Um, or maybe it did say 1.14 minutes. But now it says a minute 40. So I think there should be. I don't know what it should be, but I know it's it's been messed up for a little bit because I've heard people yelling about it. But 14-7, Shepard. There we go. 56 seconds on the on the first quarter clock here as we continue to wind down. But that's been an issue a little bit here at Ram Stadium. Had some clock issues a few times. It's been an issue at other places as well. So, you know, still having issues putting the exact time. Now a half second is on the clock, it looks like. so. Well, as anybody knows, anytime you're working with any type of uh, audio-visual equipment, expect complications. Now we have 56 seconds, so things are correct, and they should roll it, I believe, at this point. As I saw the signal from the official, but they haven't started it yet. Miranda takes the snap. Looks over the middle for Black and is caught in stride and into the end zone. Touchdown, Mercyhurst. Hey, for Braden Black, the wide receiver, as Urena connects with him for the first passing touchdown of the day for Mercyhurst, and they're still in this game here at 14-13. It's been a great opening quarter for Mercyhurst. Just a lot of good execu execution. Urena gets the ball out quick to his wide receivers, and they're taking advantage of kind of a young Shepard secondary. Yeah, and with Terry out, it only gets that much younger, and they went right after that safety position on that play. Shepard using a too-high safety look on that play, and Urena able to split those two safeties with a precision pass to the post to Black for the touchdown. And Mercyhurst certainly game, but blocked extra point. You see this Rams special teams unit once again making a play. That has been one of their mainstays throughout this season is quality special teams play. I believe Jack Baxter got his hand on that one. So Shepard remains in the lead here with 48 seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. It is Shepard 14, Mercier's 13. We're back in 30. Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Paid for by the Committee to Re-elect Craig Blair. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. 48 seconds to go in this first quarter, and Mercyhurst gets on the board once again with the touchdown pass. Urena to Black. It is Shepard 14, Mercyhurst 13 with 48 seconds left in this first quarter. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Rams will return this kickoff here once again. They do get the block on the extra point, so a positive there to end the drive for Shepard as the game's no longer, or not going to be tied. And again, the, the Rams special teams unit have made plays consistently throughout this year, and they show up again to be the difference in their game, But and right now, looking to make another play. Yep, running across midfield. Greer. And Miles Greer back deep on a kickoff return. Had to double check as I'm not used to seeing him on kickoff. Not too often. He's he, he has been quite dangerous on punt return, and there's been a rotating cast of characters back there as far as kick returns for Shepard, and they've had production from just about everybody that stepped back there, and Greer, keeping up with that tradition, makes a big play and setting up this Rams offense with excellent field position. Miles Greer is actually named, once again, the PSAC East Special Teams Player of the Week. Despite not having a touchdown, he, he got the uh, got the win for his performance last week in the punt return game. Here's Seth Morgan looking to throw, rolling out to the near side. Pass complete to Jordan Barnett, and Barnett bring, tough to bring down inside the 40-yard line. Zach Hill, first time we've called his name here today, the 
linebacker for Mercy Harris making the tackle. And Hill, one of the leading tacklers for this Lakers defense coming into today's game, having 61 tackles, 24 of those solo, also has a couple pass breakups. Had a big game last week. Had 10 tackles, 8 of those solo versus Seton Hill. Final few seconds of this opening quarter, and Shepard probably just trying to draw them off sides here before the end of the quarter, see if they can get a easy first down. But second and two, that does it for the first quarter of play. Once again, our score, Shepard 14, Mercier's 13. We're back in 60 seconds. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer, but that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. We welcome you back here to Shepherdstown. Shepherd 14, Mercyhurst 13, but the Rams are driving here once again as we begin the second quarter. Moving the ball down to the 39 yard line of Mercyhurst. Seth Morgan in the pistol formation. Jordan Barnett, the back. Cam Dorner goes in motion. And they'll go to the big back, Barnett, for the first time today on the ground, and Barnett has the first down. Down to about the 30-yard line coming up, making the tackle is Zach Hesley. Helsley. Helsley. There you go. He's also one of the leading tackles for the Mercyhurst defensive unit. 51 tackles, 25 of those solo coming into today's game. And a good run by Barnett, just patient, letting that offensive line wash down that defense. He puts his foot in the ground, cuts it back, and picks up some positive yards. Well, run Barnett here again. This time Lost his footing on that one. On the play. Roland Falaki in on that tackle. Actually, it might, have been, yeah, it might have been 99 there, James Royal. And it's kind of the jersey he had it. Kind of bunched up there in the first. I'm sure there's a, an abundance of double-sided tape that's under that jersey, so sometimes they, they get a little bit misaligned. Second down and nine here for Morgan. Morgan looking deep for Barry Hill in the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. And it was just a flat-out foot race that time. Gregory Elliott the third was the junior defensive back that was in on the coverage, and just Barry Hill just rolled right past him. And you see that is the biggest difference is on that defensive side of the ball, Mercyhurst just does not have the athletes to keep up with the speed and athleticism on the Shepherd offense. Well, not too many people are going to win yeah, that, a foot race with Barry Hill. Yeah, that's true. He's got a lot of speed out there, wide receiver. And, and so far, Morgan in this offense looking on point against Mercyhurst. The extra point is up and good, 21-13. We can talk a little bit more about that on the other side of this break, 30-second break. This is Shepherd Rams football. On TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube, 21-13, 13-44 to go in the first half. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music. Or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium here at Monte Cater Field. Shepard 21, 
Mercier's 13. Score update from the PSAC championship game. Kutztown has an early 7-0 lead over Slippery Rock, but Barry Hill hauls in the touchdown pass from Seth Morgan. Our scoring now 14-0 KU. So thank you, Dylan, for that update. But um, our scoring drives there brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district, district as Shepard gets in the end zone on the Morgan touchdown pass to Barry Hill. And you see the kickoff here from Bozick. And returning the kickoff. It's going to be Kerbacker once again. Kerbacker once again. Kerbacker trying to get some room and gets out to about the 22, 23 yard line, but the point I was going to make before we went to break there, Travis, was Shepard's offense, while Mercyhurst may not be the best defense that they're going to face, it seems like in terms of precision, taking what the defense is giving you, and just the way Morgan's placing these footballs, may not matter what defense you're going up against and the way he's throwing it today. That is true. They are executing in a very clean fashion. We know Morgan has been an accurate passer throughout this year coming into today's ball game completing over 65 percent of his passes and again you could just see that shepherd offense is just very comfortable right now early on in the game going up against that lakers defense so far though the lakers have been able to move the ball against the rams defense as pappas gets the carry there on first and ten and this will be important for shepherd throughout the game they got to slow down the run on the early downs even though uranus thrown the ball pretty well still overall I think like the Shepherd athletes against the Mercyhurst athletes and one thing I'm also noticing now it appears Dante Harrison is back he's on the field here to the near side so we saw him go down a few weeks ago wasn't sure if he was going to be back this season but Black makes the catch here and gets out of bounds but Harrison out there at corner today so that's definitely good to see not sure if he's 100% yet haven't seen him out there a ton but but the Terry uh, being ejected could they have, be part of the reason yeah, why they're getting them back out. Yeah, kind of accelerated that decision process as far as we need somebody out there. That secondary has taken the brunt of the injuries on this defensive unit. Here's a run up the middle. Mike Forbes comes up, makes the tackle after a short gain. So definitely good to see Dante, though, back on the field. as uh, He went down in a lock even game. We weren't certain, again, how serious it was. We knew he had, was expected to make a full recovery and everything, but it was definitely a scary moment there for a few minutes before we saw, obviously, him get, get on the card and kind of still be moving and interacting, so we knew things would probably be okay, but definitely good to see him back out there. Certainly like his size and his athleticism out there on the edge gives you some favorable matchups against some of the larger wide. The ball came out on the pass of the big tight end. Still Coming wait. Out, though, couldn't recover it, and I think Black got it back from Mercy Hurst. <laughs> Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. He went to the big tight end over the middle. He gets the ball punched out. And then Black there, Johnny on the spot, able to pick it up. And sometimes you just hustling after the play. Just good things are going to happen. And Mercyhurst haven't had a lot of breaks go their way. So I'm sure they're certainly happy to see that ball bounce into the hands of a Laker. As Gorski made the catch, I looked over at Dylan. He thought it should have been ruled incomplete, I believe, but. Kind of a close play there. Could have gone either way. Urena rolls out to the near side, throws complete to Kerbacker, and he's knocked out of bounds by Dante Harrison. Has the first down. So, again, this Mercyhurst team moving the football against Shepard. And, and it's surprising, I mean, because you look at Shepard, and I don't know if they're just giving Mercyhurst a lot of vanilla looks, not wanting to give away too many wrinkles before they go into the postseason, but the Lakers have been able to take advantage, and the quarterback has just been throwing dimes so far today in the secondary, showing some respect, backing off, and Urena has no problems taking those underneath check downs. Here's a run up the middle. There's Pappas. A lot of different backs, too, getting touches. We've seen a lot of the bigger Dustin Schof today, but Pappas has gotten some carries as well. And it's been a good change of pace for this, so far, high-powered Mercier's offense today, which we didn't expect to be saying. Yeah, we, we didn't expect a shootout when we came to today's game. 
We'll take it. Yeah. Definitely an interesting game here. Here's Black underneath with the catch. Naeem Alexander brings him down. And, again, we're seeing good stuff from Braden Black. And I wonder maybe Mercyhurst saw some of the big games. These, I mean, Black's not necessarily a small receiver at six foot, but kind of these guys that are slot receivers that can do a lot of different things. And uh, we, of course, saw a big game in the Cal game uh, from their slot receiver. Because at this point in the season, you got a lot of tape on everybody. So you can certainly go through and you're combing that film throughout the season, and you're going to come up with a handful of things that you feel like you're going to have success with. And so far, the Lakers have been hitting on pretty much everything. Pappas running hard up the middle. And, of course, uh, even Lockhaven had some success with their, uh, their guy that was kind of slot receiver type. So I think that – that could be what they're taking advantage of. And also the injuries in the secondary and the fact that Terry's now out of the game as well. All this stuff kind of piles up for the Shepard defense. And what happens is when you have that many injuries on the back end of your defense, it makes you play more conservative with your front seven, realizing that you're not going to be able to send blitzes or a variety of different looks because you have to try to protect those guys on the back end. And then that kind of leads into another set of problems because now you're giving the young quarterback that much more time in the pocket to find an open wide receiver. So right now Mercyhurst doing a very good job of keeping that Shepard Rams defense on the field and off balance. 9.25 to go in this second quarter. It's Shepard 21, Mercyhurst 13. They're driving here just outside the red zone on a second down and three. Tight end goes out to the wide side. Oh! He would have had it, but a penalty flag coming in. Again, penalties. Oh, man. You're not going to get many looks better than that. They motioned the tight end out to get the matchup that they wanted. They had Harrison matched up on the tight end Miss Gorski and it looks like they really caught Shepard and it because it looks like Shepard was sending a corner blitz mm -hmm. so Pena was having to come from out of the box and having to backtrack to get over there there's no way he's gonna be able to make up that much ground so Mercyhurst had an opportunity for a touchdown shot on that play and again just the miscues with the penalties we knew that could have been an issue coming in and so far it's it stung them early on so instead, they'll just run Schof, and Schof will try to get those yards back to set up a third and manageable for Mercyhurst. So, yeah, big missed opportunity there with another false start. Feels like already like three of them in this first half. Our second quarter is brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, located at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. And they've all been false starts, and you have an offense that, that shows a lot of shifts, a lot of motions, and you have to be disciplined and you have to be clean in that because you're going to start picking up penalties. And we've seen that Mercy Hurst has had their struggles this year and had their struggles so far early on in today's game. Third down and seven. Urena escapes the pocket, rolls to the left, looks down, field throws and incomplete. Tried to force that one in. That was a tough throw on the move to his left, trying to squeeze it in to his brother, Austin Urena. Grantham came over to break it up. And and, uh, Urena was rolling around out of the pocket. He's shown good mobility and was trying to direct traffic. I thought he was going to take a deep shot to the end zone, but instead just tried to squeeze it through a keyhole and was lucky that, one, he didn't get his wide receiver hurt or turn the ball over. Fourth down and seven now from the 23-yard line. 8-13 to go in this first half. Shepard up eight. Urena moving around the pocket, looking toward the end zone. Incomplete. Tried to find his brother, Adam Marina. And pass falls incomplete. I'm sorry, Austin Urena is the wide receiver. but Just trying to hit that corner route to the... Back into the end zone. I'm sure Shepard Rams football fans are quite familiar with that back corner of the end zone as Josh Gonterek made a couple of spectacular catches back there. But no such luck for the Lakers on that play. And again, Urena, you can tell he is certainly in command of the offense, moving around, extending plays. And that time it was a good decision 
It was just a little bit too far for his brother to reel it in for a touchdown catch. But you see Mercyhurst, again, is it, they have to play like an all-or-nothing style of offense, and it's, it, and it's just tough because they've been successful. They've kept that Shepherd defense out there for long periods of time, but just, just it, that their margin of error is so small that they, they are coming away with nothing when they really needed some points on that drive. Pass incomplete intended for Jeremiah Taylor. We'll bring up a second down. And, Travis, for a game you decided not to show up to, you love to <laughs> reference that play. I was at home watching it. I was like, <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> second down and 10, just over eight minutes to go in this first half. Pass over the middle, complete to Jeremiah Taylor. He gets a good block from... I'm like an illegal man downfield. Yeah. <laughs> <Wyatt Pelicano. laughs> I don't think he checked in. It's kind of hard not to notice Wyatt Pelicano down there among those smaller defensive backs and wide receivers. You have this giant offensive lineman that's traipsing down the field. Sure, the Mercy Hurst right. coaching staff is asking the same questions. No call, so maybe we just can't see. I don't know. <laughs> 7.30. Left in this first half. Morgan will hand it off to Barnett. Barnett, a big run. Still going. Barnett into the secondary, rumbling his way down inside the 20 before Dominic McGee brings him down. Good block downfield that time by Jester to spring him that much more. And when you get those big plays in the running game, it's usually the result of a wide receiver or this time a tight end downfield getting those blocks in space. And, Barnett, again, just a very patient runner. But for a big guy, shows that he, he's got the wheels. When he drops it in the fifth gear, he, he can get out and make something happen in space. Our other second quarter sponsor is Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Go to HagerstownFord.com. First down and 10 for Shepard. Morgan throws high and complete to Jeremiah Taylor, stumbling and trying to break through tackles. Potentially, if he maybe waited a little bit longer for that play to develop, could have had Cam Dorner on a corner route, but elected to go to the first read there in Taylor. 6.22 to go in this first half. It is Shepard 21, Mercyhurst 13, but the Rams are driving once again in the red zone. It was Tyler Butterball in on the tackle that play. Racked up six tackles last week, five of those solo. Hilly, the receiver here to the near side, and they will run Barnett up the middle, and Barnett gets it down inside the 10, and ball, ball came out, and it's recovered by Mercyhurst. You just saw the Mercyhurst defender there in Nevin Nowitzki just ripping at that football, and he was able to get it out. Great job by Nowitzki, and as well as the Mercyhurst defenders, knowing we have a bunch of guys around the football to bring down Barnett, and then that last guy that comes in just rips at that football and gets it out, and Mercyhurst kind of saved the way the game was going because Shepard gets the ball to start the second half, and with it being 21-13, if the Rams punch it in again, it, it could get ugly quick, but instead they get a turnover, and they have an opportunity now to make things close before halftime. Or at least just go out there and, and get some more snaps versus that Rams defense. At this point, that Rams defense has been out there for quite a long time. So another big fumble from the Shepard running game, and here's a run up the middle, and that goes absolutely enough nowhere. I think Baxter was the first one there, and then Pena cleaning it up for the Rams defense. Looks like Schof was the ball carrier on that play. And one of the few times that that Rams defense has been able to slow him down on first down, that's what's been able to keep Mercyhurst offense on track is that they've been able to get good gains on first down, so they're really now boxed into those passing situations where that Rams defensive front is able to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. I believe Bednarski led that charge as well for the Shepard defense. Coming up on five minutes to go in this first half, Urena empties the backfield on second and eleven. Throws to the near side and looked a little bit dangerous, but he found his completion there to 
Kerbacker. When Mercyhurst shifted that five-wide look, which you saw that Rams secondary, how they responded, they backed off. They gave them space underneath, and it was almost like an option route because, like you said, it looked like it was going to be a dangerous pass. But Kerbacker did a good job of just running a five-yard square in, did a good job reeling that pass in and picking up a couple yards after the catch for a third and short situation for the Lakers. Third down and three I formation for the Lakers, and they'll go play action. And just having to throw it away, this should be intentional grounding as Kevin Kowser was in the backfield. Urena threw it away to the sideline, and surprisingly, no flag here from the officials. And it will bring up fourth and one. And that was the first time that you saw Urena under center on that play. And you'll get your better play action passes from a quarterback being under center, but it was just unusual. They've had so much success with him working out of the shotgun and the pistol. Not sure why they wanted that look in particular, especially with the quarterback that's only 5'9". That's going to be a bit tougher for him to turn his back to the defense than turn around and quickly locate an open target. Austin Lippert is the backup quarterback but starting punter, and Miles Greer will fair catch it at around the 31-yard line, so you always have to be aware when Lippert goes back to punt that they could run a fake punt with him. Uh, but Shepard will take over. The turnover doesn't hurt on that drive. 4.20 to go in this first half. First down and 10 for the Rams. And we'll see that Shepard offense here once again from the 32. That's 21-13, Shepard on top. And we saw it last week. I believe Barnett had a fumble last week. Very uncharacteristic for Barnett to put the ball on the ground, but fumbles have been a problem across the board for that Rams offense. Yeah, it's just something they, they've struggled with all season. Malachi Brown gets the carry here, and he dives forward <laughs> down to the 45-yard line. Brown's kind of been the, the main guy that we've talked about with the fumbles, but now Barnett's getting some, and, of course, Nazir Russell had a few issues with some fumbles when he was healthy. So, And now it's become like a thing. Now you know it's probably in their head. It's not that they're not working on it or hammering it during practice. Most individual drills for running backs, that ball security aspect of it is going to be incorporated into each and every drill. But at this point, it's, it's a thing in their head, and it's just, just a confidence thing. You have to – just make sure you're concentrating on the small details and make sure you're able to secure that football play in and play out. First down and 10 here for the Rams after the big run from Brown. Here goes Barry Hill thrown out of bounds around the 49-yard line. I think, too, Travis, I mean, sometimes we do have to give credit to the defenders just making a good, a good play, and we saw that on that last one. Not necessarily a fumble that was completely on Barnett. It was just a good rip at the football, and obviously you want your running back to hold on to it. They're still going to look at it that way, but sometimes the defense just makes a good play, too. Good point. They, they work on ball disruption drills as well. Morgan looking deep down the middle of the field for that post route for Taylor, underthrown and incomplete. In coverage was Gregory Elliott, the second as the pass falls incomplete, it will bring up second, or I'm sorry, third down and three. And a deep shot. The Rams looking to take advantage of that too high safety look that Mercy Hurst was in. And Jeremiah Taylor able to split those safeties, but the ball was hanging in the air just a bit too long as Elliott II was able to backtrack and did a good job of just playing the wide receiver's hands. He wasn't able to locate the ball himself, but just good technique of just watching those wide receiver's hands and then making a play at the last second to bat the ball away. Morgan throws complete as it is bobbled and hauled in and still going is Shepard inside the 15-yard line. Down to about the 10 goes Cam Dorner. Good to see him back with an explosive play. Been a few weeks since we've seen that. Again, had that turf toe injury that slowed him down earlier this year, but that time showing some good acceleration after the catch. He bobbled it a little bit, but once he was able to get a handle on it, able to make something happen after the catch, and we knew that was going to be an important aspect for Mercyhurst to try to have some success today is limit that run after catch, but certainly easier said than done. You have some big physical wide receivers out there on the field for Shepard, and they can certainly make it happen once they get the ball in their hands. They hand it off to Malachi Brown. Big hole. Brown spins out. Oh, of the good job. Still fights. 
Ball Lost the, the ball, but I think Graham's he's into recovered. the end zone yeah. anyway as he stretched it across the end zone and got in for the touchdown. Shepard, Malachi Brown runs in for six, and the Rams extend the lead out to 27-13 with 2.09 to play in this first half. Brown was practically untouched for the first five yards of that run, took a hit on the five-yard line, was able to maintain his balance, did a good job putting his hand in the ground, steadying himself, and punching it into the end zone to extend this Rams lead. Bozik on to attempt the PAT. It is up, and it is good. Shepard, 28. Mercyhurst, 13. 2.09 to play in this second quarter. This is Shepard Rams football on CV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in 30 seconds. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Coach Cater Field, Shepard. 28, Mercyhurst 13, 209 to play on this senior day and military appreciation day. 209 to go in this first half, I should say. Rams get into the end zone on a Malachi Brown touchdown run. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district. Rams will kick it away to Mercyhurst to Early on, showed some fight. They got on the board first at 7 nothing, then tried to tie it back up at 14, but the extra point was blocked. Shepard now has built itself a little bit of a lead at a 15-point lead, and we'll see if that can continue into the second half. And as fair clock inside the 20-yard line, will give solid field position here to Mercyhurst. A little bit of jarring on both sides. And we'll see the Lakers offense here again. Travis just over two minutes to go in the first half. Start at the 25-yard line. Shepard gets the ball to start the second half. An important drive here for the Lakers. You mentioned that blocked extra point has really marked the big difference in the game. Up until that point, Mercyhurst was able to battle toe-to-toe with Shepard. And after that block extra point is where you've really seen the difference. And it just goes to show you just how small the margin of error is for Mercyhurst going in. You know that they're outmanned, they're outgunned, and they needed to have everything going in their favor. They did force a turnover early on, but not able to capitalize on that. Had a shot down at the end zone early on in the game, but then a penalty kind of derailed that. So just, again, small mistakes here and there, but when you're going up against the team, the caliber of a Shepard Rams football team, you really can't afford those kind of mistakes, and you can see just like how quickly that lead jumped out for the Rams' offensive unit as they've just been able to go out there and operate on all cylinders so far today. That was just an unusual play call for that last drive from Mercyhurst when they put Urena under center for that third and short play. Not just not sure, like this, since they've had the success that they've had running and throwing the ball from shotgun, I'm not sure why they would want to go under center in that situation. Here's a pass underneath complete to black. Naeem Alexander comes up and makes a big hit at the 30-yard line. Had a chance to talk to Naeem this week. Of course, he made a big impact on special teams last year, and he just felt like the opportunities he was given on special teams, he wanted to make the most of them, and now he's earned a role on this defense for Shepard this season. Is Here's a pass over the middle, complete again, first down. There's Urena connecting with Austin Urena for the first down, and Mercy Hurst moving the football again over the middle of the field, 1.37 to go in the first half, clock rolling for the Lakers as they try to move it against the Shepard Rams. Shepard was just one down lineman, and then two guys showing blitz on the line of scrimmage. Reina rolling out, froze, and incomplete. Reina trying to direct traffic, trying to get his brother to go downfield. His brother's like, no, I'm good right here. <laughs> Forcing the quarterback, well, I'm just going to throw it out of bounds then. <laughs> Second and 10, 120 to go. 
I think it was something where the quarterback, Urena, was wanting to run the ball, and he needed his brother to run a clear out for him, but his brother wasn't taking that direction in the middle of a play. But it's still, again, Urena able to throw the ball safely out of bounds and stop the clock. So second and ten. That ball tipped at the line again by Shepard. You mentioned it earlier, Travis, the height of Urena. Listed at 5-9. The Rams defense getting after it. And if you can't get to the quarterback, try to get a tip. And certainly, like, when you understand that it's go- probably going to be a lot of short passes, stuff over the middle, you're not going to be able to get to him fast enough before he gets rid of the ball. He's done a good job of making quick decisions. So what you can do is get your big paws up in the air and see if you can swat a couple balls down. And that time, nearly getting an interception for that Rams defense. Oh, good draw play. Big run for Shove. Dwayne Grantham brings him down with the first down. Looking at Shove just like that, that same stature, very similar to uh, Chance Schwartz that played running back for the Rams, also had a good career for Lockhaven, just that the same very similar style of running back. First down and 10. Urena rolling to the left, throwing and incomplete. Look like there's going to be a holding on the play. So this will hurt Mercyhurst a little bit with this holding call. Well, like the holding is true. Yeah. So doing everything he can to give his quarterback a little bit of extra time. And you're running back trying to block a. D lineman one on one. You try to use everything at your disposal to slow him down, and that time this crossed the line a little bit. But again, like when these penalties are hitting this Mercyhurst offense, they are, they are particularly painful. Fifty four seconds to go before halftime. It's Shepard twenty eight, Mercyhurst thirteen. Mercyhurst now backed up on a first and twenty from the forty eight, and a pass from Urena complete to Black. Back to that original line of scrimmage, a gain of about 10. We'll bring up a second down. And Urena has just been sharp from the pocket today. When they're able to get the ball out of his hands quickly and that rush isn't able to get into his face, very good job of making good decisions, delivering accurate passes with velocity to the sidelines. You figure this Mercyhurst team, if they're able to put something together on the defensive side of the ball, they, they have the makings of a very dangerous football team. Could be. Yeah, second and 11 here. Urena trying to run. Gets out of bounds after a few yards. Coma Yao and I believe Grantham the ones to chase him out of bounds. But if you're going to be chased by somebody, those are a couple of guys that might make you step a little bit quicker. It's true. And, I mean, this is a also I think, though, too, like Shepard's kind of giving them a lot of this underneath stuff, especially at this point in the game with – the clock kind of on Shepard's side before halftime here, and you know also this isn't a team really known for the their their kicking game. So even if they get good yardage, if they don't get in the end zone, it may not hurt you here before halftime as there's a pass over the middle caught by Urena. And we will take a 30-second break with a timeout. Shepard 28. Mercyhurst 13. This is Shepard Ranch Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm going to watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm going to watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. We welcome you back here to Coach Cater Field at Ram Stadium in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Another good day for football here in Shepherdstown. A little bit colder than it's been all season, but it's getting later in the year and still not that cold for November at this point, I feel like, Travis. No, so I'm sure Rams fans are happy. There's no wind. There's no rain. The Rams have certainly had their struggles in the elements this year, so a crisp autumn day. I'm sure Rams football fans will certainly appreciate that. Right in the gun here with three receivers and whistles coming in from the officials, but 
35 seconds to go. It's first down and 10 from the 30-yard line. So a lot of time left, a lot of opportunities left. One second on the game clock. Yeah, I think they said 2.1 seconds to the game clock. So it'll be about 37, 38 seconds to your left. I don't know how they got the point one. They are a very exact crew out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they made it 41, so I must have misheard, but I'm not running the clock. <laughs> Urena rolling out to the left, looking downfield and throws and complete pushed out of bounds after a short game. So that doesn't do any damage to the Rams besides the fact that they got out of bounds to stop the clock with 34.7. That Rams defense has been pretty stout when Urena has rolled out to his left-hand side. I imagine that the Rams defense scouted that quite well coming into today's game so it hasn't been a lot of options for him to take shots down the field when rolling out to his left so they really forced him to take the underneath stuff or most times just throw the ball away second and six from the 26 Urena steps up throws underneath complete good tackle there in space from Mujahid Johnson and that is another timeout we'll take another 30 second break it is Shepard 28 First years, 13, 28 seconds to go. This is Shepard and Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back at 30. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Kyle McLaughlin back in the studio. Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, or, I'm sorry, our on-site producer and sideline reporter. And then our cameramen are Matt and Daryl Miller. Third down and about two for the Rams from the 22-yard line, 28 seconds left before halftime. Shepard gets the ball to start the second half. Mercyhurst driving into Ram territory. Urena rolling left, looking downfield, throws over the middle, incomplete, intended for his brother, Austin Urena, and two flags come in as well. That time it looked like Urena just bailed out of the pocket a little bit premature on that play. He had his brother, Austin Urena, matched up one-on-one with Comey out over the middle, and he just needed to wait a little bit for him to make that break and get behind the linebackers, but he bailed out of that pocket a little bit premature, and that kind of put his offensive lineman in a bad spot. Like you mentioned, that's a five-wide look. They don't have any help trying to take care of those defenders up front. So as he rolled outside, just you're natural, you're going to grab some jersey, and the referees are right there to pick it out. And again, penalties beginning to mount for this Mercyhurst ball club. So a holding call against Mercyhurst pushes them back a little bit still, though 21 seconds has been a long final minute or so. I think Shepard jumped offside, so free play here for Urena. He's going to take a shot and incomplete. He wanted black on the vertical route down the field, but they're going to call all, jumps, yeah. so it should be offsides against the defense. So it's going to chip away some at it, but that time – it wasn't so much a, a bad pass by Urena. His wide receiver didn't do him any favors. I know you want to take that shot down the sidelines, but if you're doing that vertical route, you've got to give your quarterback a little bit of space in between you and the sideline to give him an opportunity to drop that in. And Black lined up so wide that there was really no space for the quarterback to squeeze that in. So if he's throwing the ball to the sidelines, it's just going to sail out of bounds. But, again, that was an opportunity for Mercy Hurst to have a big play. And, again, it was a swing and a miss. But the wide receivers, you've got to help your quarterback out a little bit, cheat in a little bit, and give him a little bit of room and give yourself a little bit of room to play with towards that sideline. Third down and seven. Urena again looking for Black on the post, and he's in. Touchdown, Mercyhurst. Man, punch.
counter punch. The previous play, they went to Black down the sideline, so he took an outside release and forced it down. This time, he set up in a similar position, so the corner naturally thinks he's going to go for the same play. And as that corner jumps to take away that outside leverage, he breaks back in with the post, and Urena just delivers an absolute dime over the middle. And this Mercyhurst offense has been fun to watch so far today. They have been executing at a very high level. The only thing that's really slowing them down has been the penalties. Yeah, 28-19. I mean, of course, it's going to be tough for them to stop this Shepard offense, but they are keeping themselves in the game and executing really well. We'll see what halftime adjustment Shepard makes because it's clear that they're doing a lot of the same things, but so far they haven't been able to adjust to it. 12 seconds left here. They're going for two due to the blocked PAT, and the pass is high and incomplete. So 12 seconds left, 28-19, our score we will take another 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back at 30. Cody, thank you. For what? For your military service. No oh, kid. It was an honor, and you're welcome. What branch? The Air Force. My dad was a Marine. Well, thank him for his service, too. You should thank all the veterans out there listening. I think you got that right, kid. You might be smart after all. Happy Veterans Day from our staff at Cody's Auto Body. And McKenna. Yeah, and that little brat, too. Cody! (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a brat. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. 28-19 our score, 12 seconds left in this first half. Again, Shepard gets the ball to start the second half, but Travis... Mercyhurst not going away, continuing to fight. They get into the end zone again. Black on a route over the middle has been deadly, as well as a lot of out routes to the sidelines and underneath stuff. Shepard's been giving it to him all day. Can they continue to do that in the second half? We'll have to wait and see. But our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Only 12 seconds left here before halftime. We'll see what kind of return Shepard can set up from its special teams unit. It's going to smartly be kicked on the ground by Mercyhurst, but Miles Greer is still dangerous with the ball in his hands. He stumbles and stays on his feet and gets decent field position. He got five seconds. We'll see if Shepard maybe tries to get it into range of a long Bozic field goal, but only five seconds, so kind of tough to get two plays in in five seconds. There is an injury on the play as well. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10. Our score, Shepard 28, Mercyhurst 19. We're back in 30 seconds. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Yep. I believe Richie Aguilar was the man that was injured on the plays. He gets helped off the field for the Rams. Shepard 28. Mercyhurst 19. Five seconds left. They have good field position, but maybe not enough time to take a shot. We'll see if Seth Morgan goes toward the end zone here from the 44-yard line. Also, though, probably... More things that could go wrong than go well for the Rams here on this final play before halftime. So just, just a nice run up run the middle. You never Malachi know. Brown, and he is brought down after a short gain, and that will do it for the first half of play. It is Shepard 28, Mercyhurst 19, and we will wait for Dylan Bishop to find Coach McCook. And as soon as Dylan has Coach McCook, we'll send it to him, but – Overall, a good first half of play for the Rams. They have a lead, at least, but defensively have a lot of things to clean up. So, And Coach McCook, as he often does, wor- working the officials going into halftime. He's a fiery competitor, if he's anything at all. So just doing everything he can to put his team in a position to be successful. And he certainly make those referees earn their paycheck today. 
So it looks like Coach McCook is making his way back down toward Dylan now as he finishes up his thoughts. And Dylan, whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Well, he's still making some points, it looks like. All right, Dylan, go ahead. Coach, you guys got the lead at the half. They've been able to move the ball on you a little bit on defense. Your offense is putting up points on the board, though. How do you feel at the half? We, we just have to go in here at halftime, realize we got a second half to play, and we got to win the second half. Uh, we'll, we'll fix the whatever's going on on defense, and we'll keep getting better. Uh, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. Our coaches will get our guys right, and we'll come out in the second half and compete. I just need things to be smooth operationally, and in that – Never mind, I can't say it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. <laughs> I think I know where he was going with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We appreciate him not saying it because we don't want him to get fined or anything like that. But uh, Shepard, 28, Mercy Years 19. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll have the halftime show. This is Shepard Rands Football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a new or used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. We welcome you into the halftime show. This is Shepard Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Our score here at the half, it is Shepard 28, Mercyhurst 19. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith. Welcome you into the halftime show brought to you by Mansion Freddy Law Firm in Martinsburg. It's about seeking justice for you. Go to WVJusticeLawyers.com. Travis, as we look back at that first half, what was kind of your first half thoughts? One, I'm completely impressed with this Mercyhurst offense. That Mercyhurst coaching staff has done a masterful job to keep their ball club in the game, has done a good job of just mixing it up, running the ball effectively, then using play-action pass effectively off of that. And the quarterback, we knew that he was going to be a tough guy to try to contain, and he has certainly lived up to that. Like we mentioned, coming into today's game, has completed touchdown passes to over 10 different players on the team, so you know he can spread the ball around, and that's despite being sacked a lot, and they've done a good job of protecting their quarterback today. So hats off to that Mercyhurst offense, but if you want to talk about offense, then you got to look at that Shepard Rams offense. They have just been absolutely clean and smooth today, and that was something that Coach McCook talked about going into halftime. He just wants to see his team go out there and just have a clean ball game 
game because you figure if you go out there, the better team is going to win. And Shepard clearly has the better team, more experience, more talent, more athleticism out there. And so far, that has been the difference of the game. But Mercyhurst has certainly shown up to give this Rams team their best shot. And that's something that Shepard has gotten used to over the years, is that they come into the game with a big target on their back. And even more so this year because of the players that they lost last year, you figure teams are coming in with extra confidence thinking like, okay, this is our year. If we're going to beat Shepard, this is going to be our year. But a lot of those teams have come to find out that Shepard football has been winning for a long time for a reason. They do a good job of recruiting talent. They do a great job of developing talent. And so far today, that Rams ball club in all three phases has made plays on offense, on defense, and especially special teams. Let's get into uh, some first-half stats brought to you by Larry DeMarco at Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the Tri-State, they have you covered. We'll start with Mercyhurst. You ran a very good first half, 19 of 26 for 223 yards, no interceptions, and the touchdown passes, the two touchdown passes as well. Schof on the ground has done a nice job. Also, nine carries, 57 yards. Pappas, seven carries, 57 yards as well. So, you know, over seven and a half yards per carry right now for this Mercyhurst team. In terms of the receivers, Black has been their go-to guy. Already 122 yards receiving on nine catches and two scores. Schoff with two catches for 28 yards. Urena with three catches for 26 yards. Kerbacker, two catches, 21 yards. For the defense, the leaders in the tackling category for Mercyhurst, Freddie with three, Helsley with three, McGee with three, Hill with three, and Butterball with three as well. On the Shepherd side of things, offensively, good first half for Seth Morgan, just two incompletions, 13 of 15. His QBR is 284.8. He's got 236 <laughs> passing yards, three touchdowns, hasn't been sacked. Jordan Barnett, four carries, 56 yards to lead the way in that big 43-yard run. Malachi Brown, six carries, 43 yards and a score. Jeremiah Taylor, four catches, 80 yards and a touchdown. Barry Hill, four catches, 68 yards and a score. Dorner, two catches, 45 yards and a touchdown as well. Batten, two catches, 35 yards. Barnett has one catch for eight yards. Defensively for Shepard, the leading tacklers in that first half, Dwayne Grantham with eight tackles, Pena with four, coming out with three, Terry with three, Baxter with three as well, leading the way for Shepard. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from Colin McLaughlin. He'll have scoreboard updates for you from across the PSAC, including that PSAC championship game between Kutztown and Slippy Rock. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, it's Colin. This is Shepard Rams football. On TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Honda Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot are in a league of their own when it comes to rugged capability. Their relentless power and versatility make these vehicles the ultimate challengers for exhilarating adventures and formidable terrain. But it's not just performance that makes these cars special. It's the unwavering determination that inspires everything we do. That's why we're KBB.com's best value brand of 2023. CMA's Honda of Winchester 3985 Valley Pike. CMA's moving lives forward. Available all-wheel drive on Pilot based on 2023 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit KBB.com for more information. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Stephen Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. 
Hi, Cresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262 4222 modernrealtyresults.com. Welcome in to the Halftime Scoreboard Show on TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. As at the half, it is Shepard leading Mercyhurst 28-19. to A surprisingly competitive shootout in half number one, but the Rams still in the lead by two scores. Let's take a look at around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference's all games in the conference currently in action and we'll start off with a halftime score between Seton Hill and Millersville as that is at 16 to 10 Seton Hill leading Millersville 17 nothing at the half between Westchester and Clarion it's Westchester in the lead in that matchup also at the half actually starting quarter number three now it's IUP leading Bloomsburg by a score of 21 to nothing. So that's the first half of our PSAC scoreboard. Let's now flip over here and take a look at some other scores. A surprising one at the half in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference Championship game at Kutztown. They lead undefeated Slippery Rock 17 to nothing. And if they can hold on to that lead, that will definitely shake things up in the Super Region 1 Top 7. And that worries you if you're a Shepherd fan just a little bit, too. First quarter coming to an end with this 1 o'clock kickoff game. Lock Haven leads Edinburgh by a score of 7 to nothing. Also in the first quarter, a game that Shepherd fans are keeping an eye on, too. That's California against East Strasburg. It is California currently up 7 nothing, And the last score in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference is Shippensburg 3, Gannon nothing at the first quarter with four and a half minutes still left in that first quarter. That one kicked off at 1 o'clock as well. Let's now take a look at some scores in NCAA Division I Top 25 action. At the half, it's number three, Michigan, on the road, leading number 10, Penn State, 14-9. 456 to go in the second quarter. It's number eight, Alabama, on the road, dominating Kentucky right now, 28-7. At halftime, it's Texas Tech leading on the road, 10-0, at number 16, Kansas, and at halftime, it's number 23, Tulane, 14, Tulsa, 10. At 2 o'clock, it will be Colorado hosting number 21, Arizona. At 3 o'clock, it's Baylor at number 25, Kansas State. At 3.30, it's Miami at number 4, Florida State, number 18, Utah at number 5, Washington, number 13, Tennessee at number 14, Missouri, number 15, Oklahoma State at UCF, Rutgers at number 22, Iowa, then at 5.30, it's Stanford at number 12, Oregon State, at 7 o'clock, it's number 9, Ole Miss, at number 2, Georgia, as well as West Virginia at number 17, Oklahoma. Then at 7.30, it's Michigan State at number one, Ohio State. Number seven, Texas at TCU. Florida at number 19, LSU. Duke at number 24, North Carolina kicks off at 8 p.m. And at 10.30, it's USC at number six, Oregon. That wraps up our halftime scoreboard show. Again, at the half, it is Shepard 28, Mercyhurst 19. We'll step aside, take another two minute break on the other side of that break. It will be time for our second half kickoff at Coach Monty Cater Field at Rams Stadium. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day. 
by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Cody, thank you. For what? For your military service. No oh, kid. It was an honor, and you're welcome. What branch? The Air Force. My dad was a Marine. Well, thank him for his service, too. I should thank all the veterans out there listening. I think you got that right, kid. You might be smart after all. Happy Veterans Day from our staff at Cody's Auto Body. And McKenna. Yeah, and that little brat, too. Cody! <laughs> <laughs> and not a brat. <laughs> We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium with just over 10 minutes left uh, until the start of the second half. Our score, Shepard 28, Mercyhurst 19. Travis took a little bit of a look at those stats at halftime. Both quarterbacks over 200 yards passing in that first half. It's turned into a bit of a shootout. It's been a fun game. Shepard's going to get the ball to start the second half. Mercyhurst coming in with nothing really to lose. They're the big underdogs. We know Shepard has everything to lose. A loss today, probably no chance of making the postseason now. There are some upsets pending. Of course, Kutztown trying to upset Slippery Rock, but they might have been in any way as the last team in, potentially, depending on what happens if you win your conference and you're one of those top ten teams, or I believe the top nine or eight, top nine, eight spots, you automatically get that seven spot even if they rank the other teams ahead of you. So there's a chance maybe that Kutztown could have been on the outside looking in with a loss, but with a win, they're going to be in. Uh, so a lot of interesting things going on. Of course, Shepard trying to hold on to this nine-point lead. We'll focus on this game and what we're seeing in front of us. But what are, I guess, some things that you'd like to see from both teams here in the second half for Shepard, how they maintain the lead, and what would be some halftime adjustments for Mercyhurst to keep themselves in it and maybe even pull off the upset? Well, first looking at Shepard, the offense is executed as well as we've seen them execute all year long, so they can just go out. There may be some minor adjustments here and there, maybe a little bit more of a ground attack here in the second half just because you want to try to keep your defense off of the field because it just looks like the Rams' offense, they're scoring quickly, and then the defense has to go out there for a sustained drive. So you don't want to, like, compound that problem by going out, scoring quickly, and putting your defense right back out there versus that Mercyhurst offense. So the Rams' offense, they're doing fine. A little bit more of the run game. Again, you want to play a clean game, so no turnovers. You don't want any type of momentum or extra possessions going to that Mercyhurst team. And, again, the Rams, the better ball club, they just need to go out there and play their game, stay focused on their goal, and they should be fine. For Mercyhurst, offensively, they're doing great. They're protecting the quarterback. That was something important coming into today's game, and they've been able to do that because the quarterback has done a good job. He's taken an active role in his own protection, one, by having good ball fakes using that play-action pass. Also, he's getting the ball out of his hands quickly. You saw later on in the half when they started to try to take some deeper shots down the field, that's when you saw that rush was able to get back there to the quarterback and flush him out of the pocket. So it's going to be important for them to keep those passes short and underneath. So that means that they're going to have to be productive on first down. So a little bit more of Schof early on. We saw Pappas come in, make some plays. But I think a heavy dose of Schof here in the second half is going to help keep the offense on schedule. They just got to clean up some of those unforced errors. They had a couple false starts. They kind of backed up and took away some opportunities. And that's just an offense. They're really not built for them to dig out of deep holes like that. 
On the defensive side of the ball, the Mercyhurst defense, we knew that they were going to have their struggles. They've had their struggles getting teams off the field on third down, but they were able to get one big stop by forcing a turnover. Unfortunately for them, the offense wasn't able to capitalize on that, but they're going to need a couple more big stops out of that defense if they're looking to try to close this gap and possibly take the lead. So right now it's going to be more on the shoulders of that defense trying to make something happen, and they're just going to have to be creative. At this point, you realize that you're not going to be able to play like vanilla football and get back into this one. So they're going to have to risk it a little bit more, and that also comes up with its own set of problems, especially when you're facing a team like Shepard that's so explosive and can take those regular, ordinary plays and make them into big scoring plays. So it's going to be a tough task for that Mercyhurst defense, so they're just going to have to throw the kitchen sink at that Shepard offense to try to get something to work because they're going to need a couple stops to get back into this game, and hopefully that offense can keep rolling the way they, the way it has for the Lakers so far today. So just a tough task, particularly for the defensive side of the ball for the Mercyhurst Lakers. Just over six minutes to go before the second half kickoff. Let's take another two-minute break, and then we'll continue here at halftime. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in two minutes. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. The challenges of tomorrow need a leader of character. A West Point graduate, a retired active duty Army veteran with 27 years of uniformed service, a battle-tested leader who knows what it means to serve. We need conservative Mac Warner. As a veteran, family man, and lifelong servant leader, Mac has the values and experience to fight for our children, our families, and our future. Mac Warner is ready to serve. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. It is Shepard 28, Mercy is 19 here at the half. Still got about three and a half minutes on that halftime clock. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith. Travis, as we continue to get ready for the start of the second half, Shepard's going to start with the football to start the second half. And uh, again, like we said, you know, the passing game has been highly efficient. Probably would like to get that running game going a little bit more but the way Seth Morgan's throwing the football I mean this looks like besides that fumble that they had with Barnett this this looks like the offense we expect them to be each and every week and while the offense was definitely good last week it it still didn't feel at their top of their game in terms of the passing game in particular I felt like with the, the accuracy Morgan was throwing some interceptions that he doesn't normally throw, and now we've seen the return to him being smart with the football and Shepard moving the ball really well. Yeah, I mean, because Morgan hasn't turned the ball over a lot this year. We've talked about the struggles as far as holding on to the football in the run game, and as far as outstanding offensive performances, you probably had to go back to that Westchester game was probably one of their better all-around performances in all three phases of the game for four quarters for this Rams ball club. So it's good to see that the Rams are playing their best offensive football here down the stretch of the regular season and it's really going to put some pressure on Mercyhurst to try to gamble to try to get back into this game and possibly take the lead I don't think that you'll come out in the second half with an onside kick 
but I think that's something that you're certainly going to have to keep in mind as the game goes on. So if Mercyhurst is able to get the ball back somehow and get a score, I think after that score, I think it might be the situation where they're going to look for an onside kick to try to steal another position to get back into this game. You don't want to put too much pressure on that defense, realizing that they're not going to be able to get too many stops today. So you're going to have to do something to steal another possession. The defense did a good job of forcing a turnover earlier in the game. You're going to need some more of that here in the second half if you're looking to claw back into this deficit and possibly take the lead. So an interesting announcement there at halftime, right before the start of the second half. And uh, we had some people come up to us and ask about it. The targeting has been overturned. So they took a review of it, must have went back on YouTube and, and took a look. So you're welcome, Shepard and Omar and Terry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, get the right call, and that's good to see. And it was just something where like it looked like Terry was going up to try to swap the pass down, and as he came down, their helmets may have made contact, but I don't think that there was any intention of targeting the quarterback's helmet. And, again, you look at them. One guy's 5'8", the other dude's 5'9". It's a, they, they can only get but so low before they have to start digging subterranean. So let them play football. Yes, I, know you want, I know you want to keep them safe, but ejecting a guy like that for an unintentional play, it's just too much. Yeah, I mean, you can understand why they called it, but it's good that they took the initiative to take a look back at it, however that was, and uh, – overturned it so definitely you know a good sign there and hats Bad. off to coach mccook working the refs at the halftime maybe that was the catalyst for them to take another look at that play yeah not definitely, too often not too often part of it I'm, I'm sure he was frustrated with a lot of things it sounded like but so I've been watching football for many years i don't think i've ever seen a call overturned well, like that before targeting is reviewable okay now at the D2 level, you don't see it reviewed too often because they don't really have the technology to do it very often. But maybe they have the ability, if the game is being streamed or whatever, to take a look back at it. I don't know exactly how they looked back at it, but they did. So it was overturned. So they do – Shepard, though, on the first play of that second half, they run the ball well for a first down with Malachi Brown, and we're back in action. Our second half kickoff was brought to you by Ollie's VIP Northside. The best local spot to catch sports or hang out with friends. Stop by 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. Ollie's VIP. We'll see you for the game. That was Butter Bow there on the tackle. Tall, rangy inside linebacker for Mercyhurst. Morgan in the gun will hand it off to Brown, and Brown fights forward for positive yardage. Mercyhurst coming up, making that hit again. Looks like Max Malice was in on the tackle for the Lakers defense. I think Zach Hill was in there as well. As it brings up second down here for Shepard. First drive of this third quarter. Rams up by nine. Missed extra point. Also playing a big, or I'm sorry, blocked extra point. Playing a big uh, factor in this one as well because Mercyhurst was forced to go for two. They could have maybe waited to go later, but... They elected to go earlier, and now they're down by two scores with a nine-point deficit. Morgan looking to throw. Throws it to a wide-open receiver. There's that wheel route from the slot positioning, and it works out well for Shepard, taking the ball all the way down to the 24-yard yeah. line. A very similar play that we saw Ronnie Brown make many times over for this Rams offense. And, again, when you have that running back, that has that type of versatility that's comfortable moving out of the backfield and making catches. We talked about Brown's background as a former wide receiver, so just a unique skill set that this Rams offense is incorporating more and more as this season has gone on. First down and 10, Dorner moving in motion, and they'll go Barnett. Barnett gets a good hole. Barnett running hard, pushing forward down to about the 16-yard line on the carry. So Shepard doing a good job of keeping this balance to start this second half. and Just a very methodical approach today by this Rams offense. They're not in a hurry. They're not trying to force anything. It's just you don't want to say they're going through the motions, but they're going through the motions in a, in a good way. It's like they're going out there and, and executing cleanly, and that's what you want to do. Barnett remains the back. They'll give it to him here, and he 
big hole again Just for a big Jordan Barnett. Push up front. They're dragging him by everything, but they can't get him down. Tried to pull the undershirt. Nothing <laughs> works against Jordan Barnett. Touchdown, Shepard. It's 34-19. Rams with 12-07 in the third quarter. And senior linebacker Christian Taylor doing everything he can to bring down Barnett, and he's just Barnett is just able to leave a wake of defenders behind him as he just rumbles into the end zone. You know, after he put the ball on the ground, he was chomping at the bit to get the ball back in his hands, and he took out his frustrations on that Lakers defense on that opening drive of the second half. Extra point from Bozic is good, and it is Shepard, 35. Mercyhurst 19, we will take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Just over 12 minutes to go in this third quarter. And Shepard gets on the board once again with another touchdown. It's Rams 35 Mercyhurst 19 as Jordan Barnett just runs hard up the middle and gets into the end zone. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate and effective fiscal conservative voice for the 16th District, James Bozick, to kick it away for the Rams. Mercyhurst has kept pace though throughout this game. They've been able to move the football, get into the end zone, show some high-powered offensive abilities, and they're going to try to do it again as... For the first time today, we see Jalen Butera return a uh, kickoff, and also he's been one of their big running backs, and we haven't seen too much of him on offense, if at all. Yeah, he hasn't checked in. They've gone. It's either been Shove or Pappas in at that running back position. It could have something to do with the fact that Butera is only a sophomore you know, this is the last game of the year. Show for grad student. You want to get him his, his final moments on the field. Pappas is also a senior, so that might have something to do with it. Um, obviously, you're still trying to win the game, but. Certainly wasn't a drop off by having yeah, those yeah. older guys in the game, and they have certainly shown up and played their best football here, especially there in that first half. Anxious to see what they're going to be able to do here in the second half. What adjustments this Rams defense is going to be able to make. And, again, it's nothing where, like, the Rams are playing bad on defense. It's just really good offense by Mercyhurst so far. And Shepard brings a blitz. Omari Terry back in the game after the overturning and makes his presence felt on the uh, overturn of the uh, – Targeting, you know, he's playing, playing with a, a sense of new life. Being a, not too often, you see the guy go from being ejected to getting back into the game, and he's already a fiery competitor. And that time, you saw something different out of the Shepherd defense. They made some adjustments right before the snap, so they're not giving them those clean reads and clean looks. They're moving guys around before the snap, trying to confuse some people up front. Here's a pass complete underneath the show. Show gets the first down, takes a shot. From O'Neal as he's knocked out of bounds. And again, Mercier's moving the chains, continuing to get the ball down the field, you know, take what the defense is giving them underneath and work with it and, and get the first down. Ball moved to the 31. And Rania right. in this offense continuing to do good things. Show showing good hands out of the backfield. Showing some good footwork working down the sideline, not stepping out and picking up that first down. Rania will hand it off on the draw play. Baxter tackles Schoof after a short gain. You look at the Mercyhurst offense in that first half. Braden Black had a huge first half, 122 yards on nine catches, two touchdowns. He's definitely a guy to keep an eye on in the second half. He uh, is lined up here to the near side with Dante Harrison lined up across from him. Urania rolling left, takes a hit as he throws and throws it away, looking 
for Austin Urena. That was Harold O'Neill supplying the pressure in the quarterback's face, and you could tell that this Rams defense, they are certainly prepared for him rolling out to his left. Every time he's rolled out to his left, that Rams defense has had all the answers, and they're either forcing him to take the check down or throw it out of bounds, and that time they forced him to throw it out of bounds. So you realize the lefty? He's an undersized quarterback, so you know they want to get him on the move, get him outside the pocket, and giving him some clear passing lanes to look through. But that Rams defense has certainly been there to answer the call. You see Terry sniffing around out there in the slot, trying to deny him that rollout opportunity. Third down and eight. Urena slings one to the far sideline. Oh, Miles Greer knocks it away. Austin Urena, the intended receiver, and it'll be fourth down for Mercyhurst with 10-13 to go in this third quarter. Our third quarter presented to you on TV10 by Harley W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater, networking, audio video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. Haven't seen too many punts today. That's true, yeah. It's been really kind of a shootout between these two teams. And this one, kind of a wobbly punt. Bounces at the 40. Ends up taking a solid roll, though, for Merciers and rolls down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Looked like they averted disaster on that play. Looked like he was going to shank it right out of bounds, but a favorable roll gives them a bit better field position as far as the Mercyhurst defense is concerned. And again, the Rams have an opportunity to extend this lead. Lakers defense just. Coming up short as far as answers to try to stop that Rams offensive unit. Our other third quarter sponsor is Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, located at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. First down and 10 from the 31-yard line for Shepard. Just over 10 minutes to go in this third quarter. Morgan throws underneath, complete to Malachi Brown. Brown running hard, gets it out to about the 40-yard line. He's brought down on the play by Helsley. Yes. I thought it was in Pavino. Yeah, you're right. It was number five. I'm sorry. Nine thirty-three to go in this third quarter. Shepard on top, 35-19. Rams trying to add to this lead. They're now trying to milk some clock as well. 12 on the play clock as Morgan hands it off to Brown with a huge old Brown into the secondary, brought down at the 45-yard line. There's Helsey again, the man bringing him down. It's another first down for the Rams. Again, this is a great opportunity for this Rams offense to just solidify that running game going into the postseason. You want to get some confidence up front, let those big guys do their work. That's been one of the standout parts of this offense. It's been that offensive line. It was one of the veteran groups coming back to this offense. Morgan play action, nothing open downfield. So now scrambling, running around. Morgan runs back He's to got the near some side, channels his inner Johnny Manziel, sheds off a tackler, and gets the first down. Seth Morgan, Mr. Mobility. <laughs> Incredible showing, run from Morgan. Showing off those wheels. Good job of the offensive line not getting a holding penalty on that play. A lot of times those off-schedule plays where the quarterback is doing something off script, a lot of times it will result in a holding penalty up front. But good technique up front by the Rams' offensive line and a good block in space that time by Brian Jester. First and ten from the 34. Brown running hard, shedding off tacklers, gets it down inside the 30-yard line. Good blocking from this Rams offensive line. They have really grown and come together, it feels like, over the last few weeks. Down on the play is Novitski, I believe, here at the around the 30-yard line. Yep. But Nevin Novitski, the six foot two senior linebacker out of Gibsonia PA. But Shepard, we talked to Y Pelicano every week on the sports me sports mix on Wednesdays. Um and you know, he talks a lot about the standard of the offensive line and how they every week have the goal of giving up no sacks. And early in the season, that was an issue. The last few weeks, they've been able to achieve that goal. For a long time, Shepard would only give up four or five sacks in a season. Uh, 
Now, part of that might have been, you know, Tyson Bajan gets the ball out pretty quick, but also they just they have a standard here. Ernie McCook spent some time as an offensive line coach. That is something that he still does as the head coach is be the offensive line coach. So, you know, they had to replace Joey Fisher. They had to replace Adam Stilley, two really good offensive linemen. Of course, Joey having a run with the Steelers right now on their practice squad. But, but that, that, that has been a grown. tradition. Yeah, that's been a very good tradition for Shepherd Rams, just the way they go out, they recruit a specific type of lineman, and they do a really good job of developing them. And it's not that they were ever bad this season. As here's a timeout, just maybe not up to Shepherd standards, which are high standards uh, to reach. And, and these last few weeks they've been able to achieve those goals. But a timeout here for Mercyhurst. Let's take a 30-second break with 7.47 to go. In the third quarter, it's 35-19 Rams. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. We welcome you back to Monty Cater Field here at Ram Stadium in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. The Shepherd Rams leading against the Mercyhurst Lakers 35 to 19, 747 to go in this third quarter. Morgan takes the snap. Throws nearly tipped and intercepted. It's Helsley. Helsley gets it on to about the 40 yard line. Morgan tried to fit it into a tight window, and the pass was tipped. And Mercyhurst has some momentum off the interception. Something we praised Seth at halftime was that he wasn't making those mistakes he's made the last few weeks. That time trying to sling it into a tough window. Ball gets tipped by a Mercyhurst defender, and then Helsley comes up with the interception. That was tough, just trying to work that seam route. They've had success working over the middle, so just went back to the well once too often, and you see Mercyhurst able to capitalize on that play. Again, just that tip drill pays off for the Lakers' defense and able to steal a possession for this Mercyhurst offense. So we'll see now what the Lakers can do with that extra possession. The pass incomplete intended for the running back show foul the backfield. Second down and 10. The Rams bringing a little bit of pressure off of the edge on that play, forcing the quarterback to get rid of it a bit quicker. That time it was Dante Harrison. Again, he's a tall, rangy defender working off of that short side. So that's something that you can do when you have one of those bigger corners and he's working that short side. You bring in that blitz. It's going to get in that quarterback's face right away and force the Aaron throw. There's a run play off that near side for Mercy. Or another thing that I think the Lakers can take away from this one as Schoef gets the carry short gain. So far, they have yet to turn the ball over against a Shepard defense that's been forcing three, four turnovers a lot recently. They've been getting after the football. So far, a team that came in with two wins, you would expect them to have a few, but they have taken care of the ball and done a good job with that so far in the ball game. Pappas is the back here on third down at six with just under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Urena slings it over the middle, complete to his wide receiver, Kerbacker. Wow, that's a very generous spot <laughs> that time. So you can see the adjustment that Mercyhurst made on that play. They realize that that Rams defense is really sitting on the offensive left. They want to keep Arena in the pocket, not allow him to get out to the left side. So when Mercyhurst did that big shift and moved over everybody over to the left, you realize that the defense really was geared up to try to stop a play going out to that side. So you had Black working that little back quick slant, and that was just enough space for him to get open, and the quarterback able to deliver an accurate pass. So you're starting to see a little bit, little bit of a chess match between this Mercyhurst offense and that Rams defense. This was good, good play call, good play design. You want to show the defense that we're going left, 
So that defense has to respect that. You can tell that they've read their scouting report, realizing that that quarterback, a lefty, likes to roll out to that side. So the defense is certainly going to be paying attention if you move that many assets over in that area. And what it's going to do is going to create some space on the backside, and that's what he was able to do, able to have a quick throw out of the pocket was Adam Urena. I think you're right about the the spot being a little bit controversial. I believe that's what the officials were discussing as even the Shepard scoreboard said fourth and one for a moment there and now says first and ten as they did move the chains. But it was pretty close. I thought he caught it right at the first down stick, so I wasn't sure if he got the ball across the first down or not. No gain, it looked like, on that play up the middle. Pena and O'Neal in on that tackle as well as Mike Forbes, be second and ten. On that play, the Shepherd defense did a good job of crashing down and maybe something where Adam Urena looks to pull that ball, maybe sneak out the backside if the Rams defense, you know they're always going to be quick to react, so it might be something where you can steal a couple yards here and there if Urena decides to pull it on that little zone read look. Urena throws it toward the sideline and incomplete. Good coverage there for the Rams will bring up a third and ten now for Mercyhurst. Mercyhurst trying to use that play action pass using that post wheel route. We've seen the Rams have success with that very same look, but that time just great coverage on the back end by Shepard. Singleton back there. Yeah, Jaleel, yeah, Jaleel Singleton stayed right in his hip pocket. That's a tough route to cover. And you have Pretty that wide receiver wild. and then they're selling that wheel route. It, the tendency is to overplay the out what you want to do, so when that wide receiver turns up, the momentum of the defender kind of pulls him away from the route, but Singleton able to stay right in his hip pocket. Urena throws and complete to Austin Urena. He makes the catch and has the first down into Shepard territory. Stepping up, taking a hit and throwing a dart, but a flag from the far sideline may be bringing this play back. Maybe offensive pass interference on Schof. I saw he was over there having some Words with the official, so it may have been some type of quick screen or something set up on the backside, and maybe Shof got a little bit too handsy for the referee's liking. And again, you have those plays out to the edge. You're going to catch a lot of attention from the referees. Yeah, it's tough if you're Mercyhurst because if that is the call, that had no impact on the play, but an eligible receiver downfield is actually going to be what they're going to rule. So Okay, so it may have been something where he was covered up and then went downfield. But that will bring up a third down and law now. And again, with Mercier's team, bring it back to about the 45-yard line. And again, very little margin for error for this Mercyhurst ball club. And we knew that they had some issues as far as penalties coming into today's game. And we've certainly seen that derail the momentum of this offense they've made plays a lot of plays so far but what's really slowed them down has been penalties a lot of unforced errors third and 15 for mercyhurst urena throws complete to his wide receiver kerbacker again and he's going to i believe pick up the first down and down to the 38 And again, nothing fancy. The inside wide receiver running a clear out, and Kerbacker able to work that dig route. That's a deep in cut, usually right around the 10 yard mark. He had to run it a lot deeper on that play. It was third and 15. So it looked like he ran it about 17. So a good, savvy veteran play by the wide receiver to run past the sticks to get that completion for a first down. So Mercyhurst picks up the first down. Now a pass incomplete as Urena was under some heat from Dwayne Grantham. Tried to get it out. To Rodriguez. That was a smart play, but that's dangerous. When you're trying to set up those screen passes and you throw the ball away down the field, sometimes you risk getting a, a possibly an offensive pass interference, but a lot of times you'll get an ineligible man downfield because those offensive linemen are downfield, and once you throw the ball past the line of scrimmage, it kind of puts them in a bad position. So lucky for Mercyhurst not to pick up a penalty on that play. Second and 10, 427 to go. In good, this good run, good blocks up front. Third That's, quarter. It's Mercyhurst offensive line. They have done a good job creating lanes for their running backs. Yeah, this doesn't look like a 2-8 and eight team. No, not Especially at all. Especially going against Shepard, it's like, why couldn't they do this every other week against <laughs> yeah. teams that you would consider to be worse than the Rams? As here's Shofa Ken trying to go over that hurdle, and that 
It might not be the smartest idea, <laughs> especially in the middle of the line of scrimmage. I wouldn't want to go. Yeah, he, he's certainly playing like a, like a man. This is his last game out there on the football field, so he's out there trying to live his gridiron dreams out. And Maybe trying I could, to show off his vertical. There you go. <laughs> in the NBA career, he might be looking for or something. I don't know. He's playing his tail off today. I, you got, got to give him that. Rodriguez is now the back for Mercyhurst as Urena looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket, delivers a strike <laughs> over the middle and caught first time in this second half. It's Black hauling it in. I believe Black was hearing some footsteps on that play. He called that pass and sat down immediately. He had a lot of he had a little bit of room to work with the defense wasn't right there, but he wasn't taking any chances. Four-yard pickup, second down and six for Mercyhurst. Just over three minutes to go in this third quarter play with Shepard leading Mercyhurst 35-19. But again, the Lakers are driving, and again, they're showing their fight here in this second half. Urena takes the snap. Steps up, hit as he throws, and intercepted. Shepard with a big interception on the tip pass. Coming away with it, I think, was Miles Greer. And it was. And previously, when we see Mercyhurst spread Shepard out with that five wide receiver look, they've had more wide receivers on the field, whereas that last time they had a running back on the field, they had a tight end on the field, so they didn't have that speed to really attack them in those positions where you would have possibly a linebacker matched up on a wide receiver. At that time, they go out there with the running back and the, and the tight end, it looked like, and that's going to be a much more favorable matchup in terms of the Rams' defense having the players that can match up on at that time. The quarterback had to hold on to the ball. That allowed that rush to get into his face, and once they were able to get a shot on him, that was just enough to slow that pass down and for Greer to come down with the interception for the Rams' defense. That's tough if you're Mercyhurst because you took a lot of time off the clock and you didn't get anything on the drive. 2.42 to go. The Shepard defense, we talked about it. They hadn't forced a turnover today, but they have been known for forcing turnovers, and they got some pressure on Urena. He throws the interception, and now Shepard takes over with a chance to continue to Build on its 35-19 lead. Ball on the eight-yard line. A long delay here from the officials, but we're ready to go. Morgan in the pistol. I believe that is Barnett lined up behind him. Here for first and ten. Taylor goes in motion. They'll feed Jordan Barnett, and Barnett runs hard up the middle for positive yardage. Again, those Shepard running backs able to get two and three yards down the field before a defender is able to get a hand on them. So, again, you have to credit that Rams offensive line. They are doing a good job of just creating space up front, creating those lanes, and just imposing their will on that Mercyhurst defense. Another thing to continue to look forward to about Shepard is this is a very young football team. Today being senior day, only graduating three seniors. They'll run it again. Good job by Curtis Jefferson, the extra offensive lineman out there on the field wearing that number three jersey. And Curtis, uh, we, we gave him some, some <laughs> jokes last week about it. But uh, he, he took it well when talking to him at practice. That's good. I didn't want to have to run out of the press box today. <laughs> Certainly don't want him chasing after me. He found it funny, so that, that was good. And the linemen seemed to find it funny as well. Uh, so. First down and ten. Of course, no harm was meant. <laughs> and the Rams continue to run it hard up the middle. But, again, you know, this team only graduates three guys heading into next year. So, with it being senior day, I think it's appropriate to just talk about the fact that this is a young ball club and they will just continue to probably be really good again next year probably make some improvements from next year to this year of course there is the transfer portal so you never know how many guys do end up actually sticking around but presuming that the majority of those starters do come back you'll have to replace your long snapper and a linebacker as here's another big run for the rams malachi brown into the secondary 
Brown still going and knocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. But other than that, Shepard will pretty much have all of its starters back, so should be exciting stuff. I think there might be a flag on this one, though. Yep, there is. So that will bring that run back. Thirty-six seconds to go in this third quarter. The holding call will bring it back on the big run. 35-19 Rams again. Thirty-six seconds to go in the third. That's Mercyhurst defense. You you know they're going to have their hands full coming into today's ball game, but have been able to force two turnovers. But unfortunately for the Lakers, the offense not able to capitalize on those turnovers. And again, you, you have two teams like this. You have a, a strong Shepherd team. You have a Mercyhurst team that's been struggling for success this year. And all it is really is just a margin of error. And you just see this Mercyhurst team. They just have little to no margin of error going up against a team like Shepherd, where they're able to play good football, but the second that they're not playing excellent football, you see that huge disparity in favor of the Rams. Morgan looking to throw and throws it underneath complete to Jeremiah Taylor, who's brought down on the play. That's Mullins coming up and making the hit. The freshman, good size on him, six foot one, corner. Out of Rochester, PA. And not too often that Taylor goes down by one defender. But he, he went low. Yeah, he went low, chopped him down. Final few seconds of this third quarter roll off the clock. And at the end of the third, Shepard 35, Mercyhurst 19. We head to the fourth in 60 seconds. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Pay for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. Welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Shepard 35, Mercier's 19 as we begin this fourth quarter. Rams have it here. Second down and seven from their own 44-yard line. Seth Morgan, the Shepard quarterback in the shotgun with two receivers to that far side. Barry Hill going in motion from right to left. And Malachi Brown is the running back. Play action pass complete to Jeremiah Taylor. Taylor... Fights forward for positive yardage inside the 50. And that was a dangerous throw that time by Morgan, throwing it out to the sideline. He's on the far hash, throwing it towards that home sideline, and that he wasn't able really to step into that throw the way he would like to. Wasn't a lot of velocity on it, but just the Mercyhurst secondary just having to play off, not able to make a play on the ball, but that was certainly a risky throw that time by Morgan. Yeah, it looked like he might have took a shot as he threw it as well as Shepard lines up here again. Looks like Taylor and Hill are the receivers here to this near side. Jester in the backfield in front of Malachi Brown. And they'll go Brown. Brown, another big hole. Spins away, gets it inside the 35-yard line. It's a first down for the Rams. So, Shepard again moving the football, but also burning some clock away, keeping that balance here in this second half. Sam Burchard was the defender on the play, able to bring him down and basically making a touchdown-saving tackle on that play. Taylor and Hill, the wide receivers. Dustin Fisher in the game as well at tight end, and they will run Brown and... Pretty good job there by the Mercyhurst defense. 
to make a play on that one. Looked like Damian Banks came up and made the play. A too tight end look that time for Shepard. Not too often you see both Fisher and Jester out on the field at the same time, but certainly an aspect of the offense that they've had some success with when they've been out there. Gives you a little bit of extra protection. They don't get used often in the past game, but Jester coming off one of his better performances of the year last week had two catches for 13 yards and a touchdown versus East Stroudsburg. They'll run Brown here once again. And it's pretty clear, you know, Shepard wants to run the football, so they're going to get these tight end sets in. They've added this extra offensive line set with Curtis Jefferson that's been pretty effective. Um, so they've they've done what they can. And, you know, part of that, too, I think due to the, the injury they had at fullback, Jack Rosnage was doing a great job as as a lead blocker. Here's Jefferson in the game. And, and they've found an identity in this run game. I believe that's Nazir Russell in the backfield, actually, on third and two. Oh, no, okay. Looks like a seven from my angle, is zero, and there is Jordan Barnett up the middle. Another big run inside the 15. Again, these Rams running backs, they're getting two and three and four yards down the field before the defense is even getting a touch on them. So credit once again to that Rams offensive line. They have taken control of this ball game, just creating highways for the running backs to run on. Yeah, and it seems like also – you know, just the the identity that they've figured out, and it started a few weeks ago in the in the Westchester game, in the Millersville game, where Shepard kind of figured some things out up front, and have just gotten better and better in the ground game. Here's Malachi Brown following Wyatt Pelicano, and gets knocked out of bounds after a short game. Like Butterball in there on the tackle did a good job of just sniffing out that play, sifting through the traffic, and Riding the running back out of the field of play. So in the first half we had a shootout. In the second half it's been 7 nothing Shepard. 11 <laughs> minutes to go in this fourth quarter after a four-yard pickup there on first down. Second down and six from the 12-yard line. Clock rolling under 11 minutes now and Morgan in the pistol. Got Taylor and Hill to this side. We'll run Malachi Brown, and Brown will get stopped on the play. Zach Hill coming up and making the tackle for Mercyhurst. Looks like Kutztown's going to bring home a PSAC championship over Slippery Rock, which would shake up those rankings quite a bit if that score holds. As the Rock was ranked number one in the rankings. And Tiffin was two. The cuts down had just shown that ability to grind out wins, and they didn't have to grind it out today. They smacked Slippery Rock around pretty good. Play action. Morgan looking to throw toward the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Shepard. It's Jeremiah Taylor again. They somehow lost Jeremiah Taylor, the number one receiver for the Rams this season. And again, when you're able to run the ball with success, that's only going to help out your passing game because now you're able to use play action pass and the defense has to bite on it. And that time, Seth Morgan did a good job selling that play action pass, turning his back to the defense, and nothing better for a quarterback to see than when he turns around, you see Jeremiah Taylor pretty much having ownership of that entire back line of the end zone. There was nobody back there. Extra point is up and good. It's Shepard 42, East, or Mercyhurst 19. And with 10 minutes to go in this fourth quarter, we'll take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Welcome you back here to Ram Stadium at newly named Monty Cater Field. It was honored, or was named in honor of Coach Cater last week. Happy Veterans Day to the veterans out there at 
Ram Stadium. It's senior day for Shepard as well as uh, Military Appreciation Day. And Shepard on top, 42-19, looking to get this win over Mersey Harris with just over 10 minutes to go. Jeremiah Taylor scoring another touchdown today. Mersey Harris will field the kick from inside the 10-yard line and get out to about the 30, but... <laughs> the entire Rams special teams unit was in on that tackle. But for the Rams, another touchdown and another scoring drive brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district. So first down at 10 for Mercyhurst, who showed some great fight in that first half, Travis. They took the early 7-0 lead, showed some creativity with their offense, made it a 14-13 game, had a blocked extra point. Seemed like they slipped away a little bit, but then they got back into it before the half with another touchdown, 28-19 score the, the score at halftime. The second half, they've moved the ball but haven't been able to finish the drive so far, and Shepard's been on the field a lot more offensively in this second half. Here's Urena slinging one down to his tight end, Ms. Gorski. For a first down. And again, the Rams dialed up some pressure that time to get back there into the face of Urena, but again, is able to make good decisions, deliver accurate passes, getting rid of the ball quickly. It's just once they've got down in the red zone, those windows get a little bit tighter. There's a little bit less space to operate with, and that's when that Rams defense has been able to have some success. Miles Greer got an interception on that last drive. For Shepard as Arena and Mercy Harris was trying to get it down the field. Here's a pass underneath, complete to Schof. And we've seen also some adjustments from the Shepard defense, maybe due to injuries, maybe due to just they like how it's been working. But we've seen a lot more of the, the three linebacker sets with Grantham, O'Neill, and Komayao. And at the beginning of the season, those guys were all maybe two of them on the field at the same time, but never really all three. Grantham's been ha- healthy the last few weeks. They've liked the play of O'Neill and coming out, so they found ways to get all three of them on the field. And, and that's good coaching right there. It shouldn't be a situation of either or. If you have players of that caliber, it's on you as a coach to figure out, how can I get all these guys on the field at the same time? Here's a pass. Double pass here for uh, Mercy and It works. Baker, or Black, excuse me, and Black. He's going to reach for the end zone, and they're saying just out of bounds at the three-yard line. The double pass, Kerbaker unloaded one to Black. Black has had a silent second half for the most part, but another big play there, and, and you like it there. Mercier's final game of the year. They're down big. Why not try something to shake up the defense a little bit? And it works. And it's always nice because when they had that quad look on the previous play, in my mind I was thinking they're setting up some type of double pass with that same type of look, but they went with a completely different look for the double pass, and, and it proved to be effective. Pappas the back to the left here, and they'll give it to the senior. He gets some push, but not enough. Almost like some of the Shepherd players were – Pushing him from behind. Yeah, looks like Greer, yeah, Greer was so eager to get in on the tackle, he was up and pushed the pile on there. So maybe he kind of <laughs> laid off a little bit. They do move it down to about the three or two, maybe even the one. I think it's actually at the one here. So here we go. Second down and goal. Pap is the back to the left, and again they'll give it to him. A flag comes in, and Shepard swallows it up in the backfield. Omari Terry in there, but leading the charge for the Rams was Kevin Kowser, who's had a big day. That flag got dropped in the back end of the end zone, so I'm curious to see what the call is going to be. Yeah, it could. It was an unusual formation that time by Mercyhurst. They only had one wide receiver split out wide. The Rams recognized it late. And had a de- yeah, I was, was going to say, it looked like the Shepherd they were like running people on and off, and they didn't have the wide receiver picked up, so they had a defender running out there at the last second. And it looks like just a savvy play that time by the Mercyhurst offense to catch that Rams defense off guard. 7.22 to go in this fourth quarter. It's 42-19, Shepard. Mercyhurst trying to punch it in. They'll have it second down and goal from the one. Spreading some things out here is Urena and the offense. Schof is the back to the right of Urena, the grad student. 
in the big back. Arena takes the snap. He goes Schof, Schof, reaching for the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown. Mercyhurst gets it in from one yard out on the Schof touchdown run. And Mercyhurst getting a little bit closer here at 45 or 42-25, 7-18 to go in this fourth quarter. Extra point running off. They're going to actually go for two with the score being the way it is and that missed extra point they had earlier. So Mercyhurst is going to go for two. And Schof able to punch it in. He was running behind the block behind Big Sean Bannis, the backup tight end, the 6'2", senior from Pittsburgh, PA, and it creates a little hole. And you can see a lot of these runs are designed for Schof. It's like you're going to have one guy to beat in the hole. And he, so far, has been very good at beating that one guy because we've talked about how Shepard, they'll go more with speed and athleticism as opposed to, you know, typical size for these positions. So sometimes when you're able to get those physical matchups and you have a bigger back, sometimes that bigger back is going to win. And on that touchdown play, that's what it was. There was a Rams defender in the hole, but he was giving up a lot of size and a lot of weight to a running back like Schof, and he was able to run it in on the body of a Rams defender. So now... Mercyhurst looking to go for two. They got the ball on the right hash mark, so that's leading me to believe that they're going to have some type of rollout to the left side of the field. They want to work that wide side of the field, and you know the defense, they have been keen to stop those kind of plays. They've given up a little backside slant before, but so far that Rams defense has been very tough as far as keeping Urena contained when he's rolling out to the left. The South Ball quarterback has shown a variety of throws so far today, but that's something that the Rams defense has denied him are those rollout plays to his left-hand side. Again, Shepard was having some issues with its substitution, so they burn a timeout. 42-25 our score, 7-18 to go in this fourth quarter. Again, Mercyhurst going for two to try to make it a little bit closer, 42-27, if they can get the two-pointer. And that always burns up the defensive coaching staff when you have to burn a timeout to get some things straight on the defensive side of the ball. They always have that mentality that a timeouts are for the offense. Urena steps up, throws, and intercepted in the back of the end zone on the two-point conversion. It was picked off by the Rams. Looks like Singleton coming away. If Jaleel Singleton gets the interception on the two-point. So it's just a failed two-point conversion, though, essentially. 30-second break, 42-25. Our score, this is Sheffer Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Mercyhurst gets back into the end zone. Used some trickery to get down there. It was a pass from Joe Kerbaker to wide receiver Braden Black, a wide receiver pass. Uh, to get him down inside the five, a penalty gets him to the one, and then punching it in from one yard out was Dustin Schof. Our scoring drives are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. And Mercyhurst will now kick it away with Shepard still on top, 42-25, 7-18 to go in this fourth quarter. And you can see the Rams, the, the, every situation right now, all the statistics are probably pointing to an onside kick at this point in the game, and the Rams have certainly responded. They have a total of eight guys up in on that 45-yard line expecting that. Mercyhurst has that unusual huddle to start the playoff. And, they always have that threat because they have their kickoff team lined up in three-point stances. So there's always that possibility that the kicker is able to hit one of those little dribblers up the middle. It's a good chance to get recovered. Instead, so they'll just kick it deep. So this could be dangerous all of a sudden as Miles Greer has some blocking in front. And Greer gets out toward the 40-yard line. And now Amari Terry and Mercyhurst have Terry lined up against the fence on this near side. Not certain how he ended up 
behind the benches of Mercyhurst. And we have a big scrummage there, so I'm not sure what led to that. I don't know, Travis, did you have an eye on it by time, by chance? It was, the, it, it was a weird play. It was something where, like, he may have gotten blocked out of bounds, but Terry's not helping his case. Walk away. Like, you've already lucked out today by getting back into the ball game. So you need to make yourself as hidden and incognito as possible. Just stop talking and get off the field. Like, you're lucky. You've dodged the bullet already so far today. So you're playing with house money. At this point, you just need to be quiet and get your butt off to the sidelines. You can't risk not being able to play next week because you couldn't keep quiet on a insignificant special teams play. You could just you got to be smarter than that. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea again how he ended up behind the bench. And again, it, and it's always the second guy, so it yeah. may not have been his fault that he was over there on the sidelines as a special teams player. It's your job to make a good uh, a conscious effort to get back out on the field of play. But even if the other guy is doing something dirty, like, dude, you got ejected in the first half. And it took your coach going to the mattresses for you to get you back into the game. So now you're back out there in the game, and you're out there in some other type of craziness. Keep your mouth shut, get your butt on the sidelines, and you're going to be able to play next week. You've got the game pretty much in the bag. There's no reason for any of that. Yeah. Uh, so now you're putting it in the hands of the referees again, and it's just there's there's no reason for it. Goodness gracious. So Amari Terry ejected twice in one game, once for the uh, penalty he received in that first half, but he was reinstated due to that penalty being overturned and now gets ejected from the game, which not certain how fighting works in terms of suspensions, but you're right, Travis, that could lead to a suspension for next week, which is a huge part of this defense. Terry has played so well this year at that safety linebacker hybrid position and to have that happen on a special teams play I mean you, you ran it down it's just no reason to get into any sort of fight when you have something to play for not only throughout the rest of this game but for next week Mercyhurst doesn't and it's just a bad penalty and a bad situation to be in you gotta be smarter than that I mean I don't know what happened Again, we're not blaming Omari Terry completely. He might be of partially in the right in terms of maybe something on the Mercier side happened first, but he got caught. Second guy always gets caught. You got to find a way to walk away from it and. And again, you're, 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 lucky to, you're lucky to be back in the game today because a lot of times when they do some type of reversal or something like that, it's usually after the fact. It's usually after the game. So the fact that he was able to come back in in the second, like, dude, at that point, you need to be a perfect gentleman for the rest of the game. And for you to get involved into something crazy like that, okay, maybe the guy did take a cheap shot on you. So what? It's football. You're winning the game. You're going to the playoffs. The other team's going home. Like, every advantage is on your sideline. Keep your mouth shut. Get your butt off the field. And live to fight another day. That's ridiculous. But Jordan Barnett gets the carry, and it's a big hole for Barnett. Barnett across the 40, still going. Jordan Barnett driven out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Coming up on seven minutes to play in this fourth quarter. And Barnett, I mean, when he gets going, man, he, it's like a freight train. I mean, it, it's impossible to stop him. And again, like you, you just you see a running back of his size, you expect him just to be just a downhill thumper, but he has so much more to his game than that. Great footwork, has, does a good job with his jump cuts or pressure steps, does a good job of just finding open space, good vision, runs hard, and has that extra gear once he gets out in the open field. Just an all-around threat at that running back position. Barnett in the backfield, gets the carry again, and Barnett running well and good throw from the official on the flag uh, as he gets it in there. Probably going to get backed up. It's usually in the area of holding. Yeah, it looked to be the case. Did our official that was on the sidelines here ever get his hat back? I don't know. It might be a souvenir for a, <laughs> a lucky Mercyhurst fan. 
I don't know if he did. I think he did. But I saw it come off at one point when he was trying to break up the fight. And I didn't see it back on him earlier. But I think he got it back. This is important stuff, Travis, that I'm trying to track for those of you that may be wondering at home. <laughs> there was some concern. There was some concern. Yeah, it looks like he got his hat back. So that, that's good. Um, six to one you get a penalty on the play. <laughs> moving. The hat has been located. Shepard back. And they'll run Malachi Brown. Not much room on that one. But for the most part, I mean, the Rams have had their day running the football. They've been able to get it going on the ground throughout this one. And that was kind of to be expected against this Mercy Hurst defense. They didn't really need to run the ball in the first half, so no real reason to. They still, I think, had over 100 yards because of some big runs. But second half, they come out, they, they needed to run the ball, take control of the game, take control of the tempo, and they've been able to do that. Another good run here for Malachi. Pushing that pile. And one of the few runs to the outside that the Rams have used today. They've had a lot of success running inside that tackle box, just pressing that advantage that they have up front versus that Mercyhurst defensive unit. But again, just you want to, in a game like this where you realize that you have the advantage, you're likely going to come away with the win, you just want to clean up some of the things that you like to do. And we know the Rams like using that stretch play to the outside because it gives the running back an opportunity just to kind of find that lane in the defense, put his foot in the ground to get north and south. And Malachi Brown has shown he's quite dangerous when he's able to get vertical like that in the run game. Third and four from the 11-yard line for Shepard Brown, the back donor. And Taylor, the wide receivers, they run Malachi again inside the 10. Right behind Fisher was the lead block on that play. The Rams like running that power inside. That's where you have that backside guard. He's pulling around. He wants to climb up and take care of that play side linebacker. And then you have that tight end as more of the kick out block on that play. But again, you give a little bit of versatility to those guys because sometimes that kick out block, he has to turn up and go get that linebacker. And that's what was the case. On that play, was Fisher was able to insert himself into the line, and Malachi Brown did a good job of getting in his hip pocket and picking up some tough yards. First and goal now from the six-yard line. They'll go Brown up the middle. Brown lowers the shoulder. He's in to the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. And the Rams extend that lead out to 48-25 with 3.54 to go in this fourth quarter. And Shepard looking to get the extra point here and continue this, this big win over Mercyhurst. Again, kind of punching their ticket to the postseason. We don't know where they'll end up or where they'll be playing, but this team's going to be in the playoffs, and they will be a team that I would imagine whoever draws Shepard in that first round will not be happy. As the extra point is up <laughs> and good. Our score, Shepard 49, Mercyhurst 25, 354 to go in the fourth. We'll keep it here as we are pretty much good on our breaks. But, Travis, uh, just, I mean, Shepard again, an impressive victory it looks like here today over Mercyhurst, a team that fought, but Shepard just proved to be too much. And again, like you, you never want to look too far down the road, and every week is going to present its own challenges. And this Mercyhurst team, they came in, they were motivated, they were hungry to try to get a big win on the road. And the Rams able to weather that storm and just maintain that consistent pressure on them. That's something that we saw the two games that the Rams did lose this year was because they went up against teams that were able to sustain their pressure for four quarters. They were knocking on the door for all four quarters. They're like, you're not going to be able to beat this Shepherd team without playing a complete game. And it was just, this is just an undermanned Mercyhurst team. And it was just, they fought as hard as they could for as long as they could. They just don't have the firepower to keep up with this Shepherd team. And you've seen plays time and time again where Shepherd has just been able to use that extra athleticism to take advantage and, and, increase this lead and wow that's a very good bounce that thing rolled down the sideline for about 20 yards before it makes it to the end zone so good patience on the side of the Mercyhurst kick returner just allowing that ball to roll around on the turf like that but just a good play going to give your offense some good field position 
But also a good kick by Bozic because if it goes out of bounds, you know, it ends up around the 40 or so. But uh, our fourth quarter presented to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group. The key to your next car is at the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. Also, as Shepard gets into the end zone once again on the Malachi Brown touchdown run, our scoring drives are presented to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Mercyhurst did make the change, a quarterback that I was anticipating here. Michael Lowry coming in, the grad student, playing in his final collegiate game. So he's going to run on and get the final few snaps here with 3.35 to go in the fourth quarter. And Shepard well in control here at 49.25. Also, our fourth quarter brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg. Your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. Lowry will get a chance to throw, and he gets a completion over the middle. Good catch and run here from Lowry to Griffin Beatty, another senior. So, you know, a lot of these guys playing in their final game and for the Mercyhurst team, and they're trying to get them some final reps out here. And credit to the Mercyhurst staff. They've been working in those upperclassmen throughout today's game, but you really haven't noticed a drop-off. Everybody's come in. They've known their job. They have went out there and executed well. Certainly a credit to the coaching staff. Lowry looking deep down that far sideline and almost an incredible catch, but incomplete pass intended for Michael Davis, another senior, 6'6 senior. I think they maybe use Davis a little bit more that size. I haven't seen much of him today. No, not too much. And quarterback coming in, going with a back shoulder fade, so he's trying to show off all the all the weapons in his arsenal. Run game up the middle. Shof again. Just some outstanding running. He's just a big physical running back. Good feet, good agility, good vision, good hands out of the backfield. Just a, just an all-around quality running back for this Lakers offense. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, they'll, they'll have to replace him as he as he graduates. But this is a Mercy Air's program that's showing some good things today, and I think they can build off of this game even though it's going to result in a loss and the final score may not look that great the fact that they were in the game against Shepard for a half and put some pressure on the Rams who are going to be a playoff team is pretty impressive by the way Kutztown winning the peace act today in dominating fashion over Slippery Rock which I think most likely knocks out Shepard as a home playoff team for the first round I mean we'll see but it's going to be tough for them to jump both Cal and Kutztown now as Kutztown probably moves themselves in to that four spot despite a loss to Cal earlier. Winning the PSAC will most likely get you a home game. Here's some play action from Mitchell under some heat, throwing off his back foot and juggled and incomplete. Looks like Naeem Alexander had a chance to make a play on the ball, wasn't able to get a clean handle before he went out of bounds. Quarterback taking a shot for Kerbacker on a deep post. And, again, we haven't seen Mercyhurst going under center that much. But, again, it's always a nice tool to have in your bag when you're trying to work a play-action pass. But this Mercyhurst offense, I'll tell you what, they, they came to play today. Kerbacker's helmet comes off, so he has to leave the game one 16 to go in this one. Second down and 10 for Mercyhurst. Shepard well in control, as I said, 49 25. They'll run Schof once again. Good tackle in space for Shepard. Like Makai Young in on that tackle. Which I think is Queen potentially. And, and no, it is young. Yeah, young made the tackle, and that's not an easy assignment, bringing down show for one-on-one like that on the edge. The Shepard also has some of their younger guys in here as Mitchell trying to throw it to the near side, tipped and incomplete. Good break on the ball from Shepard's 
Tyree Wimblerly. And that was Young in there as well. Quarterback just trying to squeeze it into his tight end. So fourth and eight. Pretty much the final uh, play we'll see an actual attempt at positive yardage on is if it is a turnover on downs, you would expect Shepard to kneel the football with 38 seconds left. Mitchell taking one of his last snaps here for the season and for his career at Mercyhurst. Takes the snap, hands it off to Schof. Schof going for that hurdle. He's, he's been hitting that triangle button all day today. <laughs> Trying to get over the defense, doing whatever he can. He's getting a big hug from his offensive line. I'm sure he appreciates them and those offensive linemen. They always appreciate a hard running running back and goes out on a high note. Wasn't able to get the win today, but he certainly proved himself to be a high caliber football player. Kramer and Young combined for the tackle. 31 seconds left. The Rams can take a knee and then become scoreboard watchers slash waiting for tomorrow when the, or maybe Monday might even be, but I think it would probably come out tomorrow in terms of where they are headed in the postseason. Seth Morgan takes the knee and the Rams get the win to improve the record to 9-2. Shepard with the 49-25 win over Mercyhurst here on Senior Day and Military Appreciation Day. Travis, your initial thoughts on this one? Well, it was something where you realized the Rams needed to come out here and take care of business. It could have been easy to overlook this Mercyhurst game, but you can tell the Rams have learned their lessons during the course of the season where you really can't afford to overlook any opponent in the PSAC. So they came out with a very methodical and calculated approach. They did what they needed to do on the offensive side of the ball, executed a very clean ball game, put up a lot of points on the board. The defense made plays when they needed to make plays and just created that difference in the ball game that was in favor of the Shepherd Rams. Again, they had some issues on defense. They had a, a, a tough quarterback to go up against in Urena, but they were able to make those adjustments, force a couple turnovers down the stretch, and again, special teams comes up huge for the Rams as Baxter, once he was able to get through that line and knock down that extra point, really kind of marked the turning point in today's game. So a good game for the Rams, and hats off to Mercyhurst. That's a long trip to come down here and play as well as they did after at the end of a very long season. So credit to that Mercyhurst coaching staff for not only having their guys motivated, but certainly mentally prepared to step out there and perform at a high level today. I think we'll get Coach McCook here momentarily. Don't know how long this other interview is going to take before he's uh, ready for us, but... We'll just kind of keep it here before we get into the postgame show, Travis. As again, we don't know where Shepard will end up. Cuts down winning the PSAC. Probably takes away the Rams' chances at that home playoff game, considering the Golden Bears now have the PSAC championship. The head-to-head -head over Shepard as well would be tough to jump both them and Cal in the rankings, despite Shepard having the head-to-head -head over Cal. They may still jump uh, the Vulcans, but I don't know if they'll – They'll uh, be able to jump both Cal and Kutztown for a home game next week. Also, some other things could happen, maybe some crazy upsets. Of course, Charleston could get upset today. I think they still have to play. So there could still be something crazy that happens that, that leads to Shepard playing at home, but it doesn't look too likely. As looks like Dylan has Coach McCook. Dylan, whenever you are ready, go ahead and take over. All right, Coach, you guys end up getting the win. Be able to play a lot more. Uh, better defense in the second half, held them to some less points. How would you feel about that side of the ball, especially in the second half? You know, I, I feel good about obviously winning. We're going to enjoy winning. Uh, we're going to come in and watch it. We're going to enjoy it this evening, but we're going to come back on uh, tomorrow morning and get it, get into the film, make the corrections. Hopefully things will go our way and we'll get a bid to the playoffs. That's what it looks like. It looks like it might be a road game in the end since Kutztown ended up taking uh, the game against Slippery Rock. Uh how do you feel about your team going into the playoffs? You know, I, I think that we're playing well. I mean, we had that tough loss at Bloomsburg. I think that was a great wake-up call for our players. I think we've had. I think when you when you really peel the onion back and you look at the last two weeks, uh, we're you're, we're going to feel really good about our program, no matter what, how the thing plays out. I'm happy how we have finished the regular season against East Stroudsburg and then at Mercyhurst. 
All right, Coach, congrats on the win. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Coach McCook, as well as Shepard gets the win over Mercyhurst here today. We will take a two-minute break on the other side of that break. We'll have the Palace Lounge post-game show. We'll get Travis's awards. We'll bring you some uh, post-game stats, and we'll wrap things up here from Ram Stadium. Back in two minutes with the post-game show. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. It's the post game show. As we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV 10 broadcast team. We welcome you into the post-game show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg with a full lunch and dinner menu, with daily specials, and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. Go ahead and jump into our post-game stats brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer in Route 11 South Inwood, taking care of you like nobody's business. Again, Bechtel Jewelers. Uh, they are retiring, so they are closing the business. So they have a deals up to 70% off. So stop in before everything is gone there. But let's go ahead and, and break down some uh, post-game stats here. We'll start with the Rams. Seth Morgan, 296 passing yards today, four touchdowns, one pick. He also ran for 11 yards on his one carry on the ground for Shepard. It was a big day. Jordan Barnett goes over 100 yards. He goes over 150 yards, 166 on the ground for Barnett on just 11 carries. That's 15 yards a carry for him. For Malachi Brown, also a big day. 20 carries, 147 yards, and two scores for Malachi as well. So both running backs going over 140 rushing yards. Don't see that too often, but just a huge, huge day for them. Jeremiah Taylor, seven ca catches, 102 yards and two scores as well. Barry Hill, four for 68 and a score. Cam Dorner, two for 45 and a touchdown. So spreading the football well throughout this offense. And then defensively for the Rams, Dwayne Grantham led the team in tackles. And Elio Pena had six tackles. Komi out with six as well. Jack Baxter with five. On the Mercyhurst side, Passing the football, Adam Urena finishes the day with a very solid performance. 25 to 38, 290 yards and two scores uh, for the running game. It was Dustin Schof coming up just short of 100 yards, 19 carries, 96 yards on the day and a score that's 5.1 yards per carry. Mike Pappas also ran pretty well. Nine carries, 59 yards, and a touchdown. And then receiving, 
Braden Black had the big first half with nine catches in that first half, but finishes with just 11. 11 catches, 181 yards, and two touchdowns. Joe Kerbaker had a pretty good day. Four catches, 83 yards. He threw the 49-yard pass as well. And then Dustin Shove had four catches for 43 yards. Defensively for Mercyhurst, tackles leader was Butterball with 11. Helsey with eight. He also had an interception. Burchard with six and Mullins with six. Let's get into our awards portion here of the post-game show. Travis, you ready? I am ready. Good. That's who you get paid to be. <laughs> Electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just a appliance store any longer. They're located at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online. At Orsinis.com, what's your electrifying play of the game today, Travis? Well, my electrifying play of the game is going to have to go to Joe Kerbacher with his double pass to Braden Black for 49 yards in the fourth quarter. It wasn't enough to punch it in for a touchdown. It came close, but anytime I see a nice trick play perfectly executed like that, that's always going to get my electrifying play of the game. So my electrifying play of the game goes to Joe Kerbacher and Braden Black. What about the uh, collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, family-owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. I'm going a bit abstract with my collision of the game today. My collision of the game is Matt Bednarski's hand with the blocked extra point in the first quarter because that really seemed to mark a big turning point in the ball game right at that point it was kind of a shootout mercy Hurst was able to keep pace with the rams offense but that blocked extra point by matt bednarski that really seemed to kind of turn the tide of the game more in favor of the rams offense so that's going to be my collision of the game matt bednarski's big paul versus that football in the block extra point all right you went with the vincent van gogh <laughs> yeah. a little bit abstract <laughs> But uh, how about the good hands catch of the game brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance for all of your insurance needs. Call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. Well, it was a lot of good catches, a lot of good throws out there today, but the one that stood out to me was the 52-yard touchdown catch by Jeremiah Taylor early on in the first quarter where he was able to get behind those safeties and really attack that too high look. So, my catch of the game is going to go to Jeremiah Taylor with the 52-yard touchdown catch. And then finally, the player of the game brought to you by Bodwell Insurance Solutions, a local professional help if you, to help you with all of your insurance, all of your Medicare needs. Go to BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com. Well, my player of the game, I'm going to have to split it up this time. It's going to have to go to Malachi Brown and Jordan Barnett. They combined for over 300 yards on the ground with three touchdowns. I, I, was, I, I was wrestling. I was having a fight inside. It was a dilemma. Do I give it to the running backs that had a great game, or do I give it to the big uglies up front that created those lanes for the running backs? But, again, Malachi Brown, Jordan Barnett, they just made some spectacular plays out in space and able to turn on the Jets and make some big plays. So, Today's players of the game is going to go to Malachi Brown, Jordan Barnett, over 300 yards, three touchdowns. That's my player of the game. Yeah, and, I mean, to be honest, you could give it to Morgan or one of the receivers as well. So it was just a great offensive performance for Shepard today to close out the regular season. Stay tuned to the Sports Mix on Monday at noon um, as we'll have an update for where Shepard will be playing and, and what our broadcast situation will look like for next week as well. But for Matt Miller, Daryl Miller, our cameraman, our cameraman, I should say, and Dylan Bishop, our on-site producer, Colin McLaughlin, back in the studio. We'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, you'll hear from Colin with some post-game scores. But this is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call my parents. Dad, come over. The first gets done. <laughs> the Traeger Connected Experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. The challenges of tomorrow need a leader of character. 
a West Point graduate, a retired active duty Army veteran with 27 years of uniformed service, a battle-tested leader who knows what it means to serve. We need conservative Mac Warner. As a veteran, family man, and lifelong servant leader, Mac has the values and experience to fight for our children, our families, and our future. Mac Warner is ready to serve. Have you heard the news? Bechtel Jewelers is going out of business. Hi, I'm Lori, and I want to thank our cherished customers for years of friendship. We are liquidating our entire inventory with savings up to 70%. Come visit us in Inwood, now during our diamond stud blowout, where for a limited time, our diamond studs are up to 50% off. Don't miss your chance to get the diamonds of your dreams. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. We welcome you into the Extra Point post-game scoreboard show on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as Shepard gets the win over Mercyhurst by a final score of 49-25 to as the regular season comes to an end for Shepard finishing with a 9-2 record. Mercyhurst ends the season with a 2-9 and nine record. Let's now take a look at around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference for some final scores, as it was Seton Hill getting a 30-10 to 10 win over Millersville. Also final score, Westchester 34, Clarion 7. IUP shuts out Bloomsburg by a final score of 31 to nothing. Let's now take a look at some other scores around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. In the conference championship game, it's Cutstown pulling off the upset, defeating Slippery Rock big time. 31 to 7, the final score in that one. So kind of looks like with that win, Cutstown will get a home playoff game most likely, unless the committee does not view this as highly as we expect, but all expectations on our end with this win for Cutstown will probably put them as the three or the four seed in the Super Region, meaning they'll have a home playoff game next week. Fourth quarter getting started between Lockhaven and Edinburgh. That one a close one. Lockhaven only up 23-22. to 22. And then another game that Shepard fans are keeping an eye on because both these teams right around the same standings in the Super Region with Shepard. It is East Stroudsburg now leading Cal U 14 to 10 with 7.14 to go in quarter number three. And then our last game in the conference, 10-10 now, Shippensburg and Gannon in the third quarter with two minutes remaining. That's your scores around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Let's now take a look at some top 25 action in NCAA Division I football as number three Michigan has taken control against number 10 Penn State. Michigan leads 24-9 to in Happy Valley with 4.09 remaining in regulation. 9.46 to go in the fourth quarter. It's number eight, Alabama, taking care of business over Kentucky. They lead 49-14. 38 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Texas Tech currently leads number 16, Kansas, 13-10. However, Kansas has a third and goal at Texas Tech's three-yard line. So keep an eye on that to see if Kansas can potentially come back at the win. Maybe I'll circle back, give you a final score later on here if we still have time. Number 23, Tulane in the lead against Tulsa, 24-16. Tulsa with the ball, 4.43 to go in quarter number four. 
8.33 to go in the second quarter. It's number 21, Arizona tied with Colorado, 14-14. Baylor and number 25, Kansas State just kicking off. And at 3.30, it's Miami at number 4, Florida State. Number 18, Utah at number 5, Washington. Number 13, Tennessee at number 14, Missouri. Number 15, Oklahoma State at UCF. Rutgers at number 22, Iowa. And at 5.30, it's Stanford at number 12, Oregon State. Then at 7 o'clock, it's number 9, Ole Miss at number 2, Georgia. The West Virginia Mountaineers at 7 o'clock take on number 17, Oklahoma. You can tune into that game on Talk Radio WRNR 106.5 FM AM Channel 740 pregame coverage from the Mountaineer Sports Network starting at 4 p.m. again, kickoff at 7 p.m. for the Mountaineers game. If you want to watch it on TV, it is on Fox again this week. At 7.30, it's Michigan State at number one, Ohio State, number seven, Texas at TCU, Florida at number 19, LSU. Then at 8 p.m., it's Duke at number 24, North Carolina. USC at number 6, Oregon, will take place at 10.30 tonight. That wraps things up here on the postgame show. It looks like Kansas went with a field goal, so that ties things up between Kansas and Texas Tech in the Big 12 at 13 apiece. But again, our final score, Shepard 49, Mercyhurst 20. Five, pay attention to our social media pages, TV10, the Sports Mix. If we get the Super Region rankings either tonight or tomorrow, we'll post them there. If not, tune into the Sports Mix Monday at noon for our reactions to where the seating is and where Shepard will be playing, hopefully, in the playoffs next week. I'm Colin McLaughlin signing off. This has been Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. You've been watching coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Small Wood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddie Law Firm. TV10 Sports thanks you for watching today's game. All